Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everything's Been Done podcast, conversations in cycling subculture. I'm your host, Dustin Klein, and welcome to my 1992 Videomax Magnavox VHS recorder. Today's episode is brought to you by Gravel Bikepacking, a director's cut into the odyssey of a bicycle experience. Uh, my buddy Doug and I went on a bikepacking trip on our gravel bikes. It was awesome, but we made a director's cut, and by we, we mean I. Uh, it's cool. You can find that at dustdecline.com slash shop. <laughs> oh my god. Today's guest is, I mean, honestly, this was one of the funnest episodes I've ever done. I feel like talking to Jeremy makes me a better person. It just, yeah. So hopefully that shines through in this conversation, which I think Jeremy wins the Endurance Award on the longest podcast, which, good for you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, we talk about all kinds of things. Bicycles, life, emotions, brands, marketing, magazines, owning businesses. It was awesome. So, yeah. Thank you, Jeremy Dunn, for being on here. If you would like to find out more on the inner workings of Jeremy, you can find him online at The Athletic and on Instagram at Jeremy Dunn. Please welcome Mr. Jeremy Dunn. Jeremy, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Anything for you. Oh, shucks. Hey, uh, I just want to start off with a very simple question. What's your first memory of cycling? You know, I was just watching some of your other podcasts, and I, I sort of, it's sort of unfair because I prepped for this. Oh, cool. Um, I bought a mountain bike from, like, when I was in middle school from my science teacher. Whoa. And because I had these two, these two friends, that we, I called them the fierce Austin brothers. One was a year older than me. One was a year younger than me. And they were really into mountain biking and racing road bikes and all kinds of stuff. And they were always trying to get me to come ride with them. Oh, and wow. so how old were you? I don't, yeah, I mean, how old are you when you're in middle school? Like 13 or something? Yeah, 14? that seems fine. Yeah, tweener. <laughs> yeah. And so I bought this hard rock, specialized oh, hard rock. Sick. From my science teacher and Mr. Johnston. Shout out to Mr. Johnston. Sick. And, uh,. <laughs> They, we went and like rode all over the place with that thing. But the thing, the one that really stuck out for me was they lived out, out in the, out like on a farm. And so we went out and rode around on these cow paths one winter after it had like dumped snow. So I remember just like ripping around on these, these, sort of rough little trails and, and you would crash all the time, but it was like this soft pillowy snow, um, which made it super fun. So I always kind of, I like to dip back into the fierce Austin brothers and, uh, and that memory. And then That's when I go to, where was that? This was in Wisconsin. Proper winter. Yeah, it was in, I, so I grew up in a town of, 3,000-ish people called Lancaster, Wisconsin. And this was outside of that. Just, you know, farmland. Oh, cool. I'm surprised that your teacher's Actually, bike... Actually, wasn't <laughs> I, I'm surprised that your teacher's bike fit you. It probably didn't. Now that I think about it. Oh, totally. <laughs> He's but, like, here you go, it's got two wheels. Good luck. Yeah. And, you know, it's there, there was a lot of funny and fun stuff that came about that. And a, there's a good crew of, of cyclists, mountain bikers um, that still do. There was this thing called the Blockhouse Roll, which was like, I think, like a every Tuesday night kind of mountain bike race out on somebody's farm. Cool. And then it yeah. turned into a real race. And I think it's still going. And some of that crew is still so there's a, a fun cool little 
subculture that happens there. There was a funny, we did the race probably that summer. It was my first race and it was, and these guys raced all the time. So I was, I can't remember what category I was in, but this was like the fir- my first a- anything, Cl- you know, toe cages, Whoa. running running shoes, like probably basketball shorts, the whole deal. And I remember coming up and it had this, had this crazy climb on it. I remember kind of grinding up this climb and just being like, this sucks. I'm never doing this again. This is terrible. And getting near the top of the climb, which was kind of, you know, there was a, it kind of like, like curved towards the finish and then went back away from it and then came back towards the finish. Huh. But So there were all these people there and my friends were the Austin brothers, Jed and Joel were yelling at me and, and I was like kind of laughing, like, ha, ha, ha. They're, these guys are yelling at me. I'm going up this climb. And uh, when I got closer to them, they were like, you're winning. Whoa. Like, you're winning. Like you're in first place. And I was like, what, 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 what? And my feet came out of the, the toe cages and I was like scrambling, like uh-huh. falling down, trying to get back on my bike. And the guy and this guy behind me passed me and uh-huh. he ended up winning and I got second. But I was like, I had no idea where I was the whole <laughs> race. And so they were like, you're actually you're actually in first. That is so. so actually like competition and racing has kind of been it's almost like part of the path that you've had with cycling. It sounds like. Yeah, that that was like a good. So I ran uh, track and field. Sorry if I'm like looking all over the place. I don't have anything to look at here while you're doing this. You're so looking right like, at us. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, track and field and cross country was my first dip into fully being competitive. I played basketball all growing up and loved that and still love it. Um, but track and field is where I really got competitive and, you know, ran all through high school and then in, you know, did division one track and field through college, um, sort of paid my way through college with that. Um, and then got a job at a bike shop while I was in. So the, so the cycling sort of took a back seat to running into high school. And then I picked it back up again when I was in college, I got a job at a bike shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin called Ben's Ben's cycles in Milwaukee, South, South side of Milwaukee. And was like taking the bus there every day. Oh, well, what's that like, They're like, uh, ride a bike. I know, it's so, like, it's so dumb. And you have this, and I remember like sitting on the bus and seeing like, um, <laughs> you know, there was a pre- there's a pretty fun and, and funny uh, messenger scene in, in Milwaukee um, and looking out the window and just being like, those guys look cool. And that's a much better way to get to work than to sit here with a bunch of stinky people on a bus for an hour. (laughs) So then like, I would just, I think the next day I went and, you know, I had this Cannondale road bike that was fully stripped of all its paint. It was one of those, it was probably like a bad something and it was stripped of all its paint and looked so badass, you know? Um, because it was just raw. Was it a messenger's bike? No. I mean, I liked to think it was as cool as a messenger's (laughs) bike, but (laughs) I think I got it from one of the other crew that did the blockhouse roll. Oh, whoa. Cool. Um, Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a, yeah, I think that's where it came from. Fritz, Mr. Fritz. Were you ever a bike messenger? Uh, yes, actually, I was oh. a bike messenger. What city? Uh, in Milwaukee. Oh, cool. It, did you do a winter? I did a winter. Whoa. I did a hot summer. And I, I'm, forget, I'm forgetting the name of the company. It wasn't Breakaway. It was... 
fuck, I'll have to tell you later. But their their thing was they were really into hockey. And so oh. they had these like, hockey jerseys made up. Oh, sick. Sort of. But I was like, I mean, you can see I'm like a big, burly person now. But <laughs> um, back then, I weighed probably 30 pounds less because I was like running all the time. And they gave me this like extra large messenger oh, jersey. Jesus. And they were like, so like, you have to wear this. This is our uniform. Oh. So I would wear it until I was like four blocks away. And it was just like billowing out around me. And then I would throw it in, in the bag and cruise around. Um, but the fun thing about that shop was they had a bicycle rickshaw. Oh, it cool. was, it was part of there. It was like two of them that, that they had in the back there. And I was like, I was like, what do you guys use that for? And they were like, oh, we just take them out when there's like this summer fest, this festival downtown, or we ride them out to the to the county stadium where the where the Milwaukee Brewers played. And we just drive around and like charge people for rides. Cool. You know, take drunk people up to the <laughs> to the state, back to their car. And to stuff. their car. And so you I know. was like, holy Drive-safe. shit. <laughs> Um, so I did that oh. for a number of summers. Oh, wow. Um, and it was, it was rad. We would just cruise around at night, give people rides and, um, just like make a, make a ton of money off drunk people. Cool. Yeah. You know? Party bus, right? They're stoked cause it's weird and fun and like drunk totally. and they're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> And you would challenge them, right? At the Brewers game, they're getting lit up in the parking lot and then going to the game. So you'd be like, dude, I could, <laughs> I could take all you – I bet you $20 each that I can take – fit all of you on the back here. And they'd be like, you can't let me do that. <sighs> you know, and then you'd pile them on to the back and cruise up to the, cruise up to the stadium. And, and then everybody's stoked. Right. They're like, you're the fucking coolest dude. Ah!" Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then the thing that I would do then is like, I would like give them little business cards and they could call me afterwards. And then I would take them remember where their, their cars were. So, so then I could take them back to their cars. Ever the, ever the capitalist. And this is how Amazon was started. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up. (laughs) Hustler. <laughs> we stored those at a, it was funny though, because we stored those at this bar stadium called Long Dong's was a, was a, a Chinese restaurant. Oh, cool. Pretty rad. Yeah. Uh, we need one of those cook's hats. <laughs> like a foamy. Yeah, that'd be pretty classic. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're going to what, do- uh, what beer are you drinking over there? I have a not sponsored Pelican Brewing Breaker Breaker Double IPA, baby. What about you? That sounds intense. I can't. I can't do those. Have my little tum tum. I like the. I like strong beer. <laughs> I'm doing that. a Zoigel, Zoigel House Pilsner. That, that's cute. Right. <laughs> I like it. Okay, here's a random one sure. for you. Oh yeah, cheers. Here, we'll do it on the do it on your thing. On your right hand side. Yeah, you got it. Uh, Just go straight to the camera. Oh, that works. Yeah. Kink. Oh, straight to the camera, like cheers. That was perfect. Okay, rando yes. one. What's the most hit me. what's the most useful thing you you own? Ooh, la, la, la. What's that, the most useful thing you own? Wow useful my brain um do you own your brain uh, you don't own your brain your brain owns you Ooh, um, ooh, oh ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah right mic drop and i'm out i don't know see that's, that's how a good question. that's how i would answer the question i was reading some of these questions i was like i'd be so horrible at this not that you're horrible at this but i'd be like i don't know how to answer any of these <laughs> And you're doing exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I don't just, know. Just useful, pick something. I need like a, I need like a context. Like, I mean, what's when, the most useful bike thing you own, or what's the most useful um, art yeah, thing you own? Or, yeah, but then I would say like, you know, what do you use the most in one week? 
because then you get the weekends there and like it's useful. I would say a computer. It's like a, a fucking boring, dumb thing to say or my phone, but they're just so yeah, functional. I mean, totally. Those those things for sure. But I was trying to think of something like actually interesting. Um, OK, well, bad question. We'll, we'll move on. OK, here's a here's a tricky oh, one. No. Oh, you want to tell you. OK, can I tell you the most useful thing I bought recently? Perfect. I bought one of those one up USA racks. Oh, tight. For my, for my car. They're so dope. Yeah, they're really they make, functional. They're really functional and they make you feel good about the fact that your bike's not going to maybe fly off your bike. And here's the car. cool thing your bike's not going to fly off your car. Here's the cool thing made in Wisconsin, like eight miles from, from where I grew up. Whoa, Dickie. I didn't know Wisconsin. I knew America, but that's cool. I bet they know what the blockhouse role is. I bet you're right. And shout out to One Up. They are like a cool brand. USA made racks. They I use one. Jeremy used one. They're they're legit. They they crack me up too because at my new job, which we can talk about later, people always ask. What's our discount for the One Up USA? And I'm always like, man, you don't need a discount. Just go get that shit. Like, this is small business. Support that small business. Yeah, that's a cool answer. Man, you're making so much fucking money now. It's like, whatever. Who wants some? We got money. You want money? Everybody. All this money. I wish I had bags of money here to just throw whenever you. <laughs> it's like a, hit a fan and it just starts. It's like confetti. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you see how sweaty I'm getting already? Oh, that's the those are nerves right there. That's the beer talking. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> it's hot in here. Cuz we can't open our goddamn windows because everything around us is burning. Oh, and let me clear the air with this. <laughs> Fuck it, pun intended. Sure. Is there's not one big fire. There's a lot of little fires. Everyone thinks there's like this wall of flame that's coming towards us. It doesn't work like that. No. Although I think a couple of them have joined force. <laughs> oh, no. Um, oh, shit. To make big. Yeah. Well, um, well, I tangented us, but since you brought it up, what what is uh, your new job is quite the exciting. How do we how do we even segue into this one? Because up until you started the job that you have right now, you were doing your own project called the not athletic true. not true oh that's right well but you know for the sake of thousand foot view pretty much well that sent me down that that first the first job at cinco sent me down a path of of uh like oh yeah i could work other places so oh really you feel like it helped kind of like warm you up to the idea definitely. interesting Okay, but well, and it gave me, it gave me a bunch of, like I had to, I was doing interviews at places, right? So it gave me a lot of practice getting ready for the big one. And then um, we sh we should big. preface for anyone that doesn't know your past. Jeremy did a brand called The Athletic, which was apparel. You guys had a, a really cool store that was based in Portland, and it was run with your wife Julie. And it, yeah, yeah, you guys were, you guys were awesome. Good vibes. Like, I mean, I like to think years. we're still awesome, but there may be, and it may also be a rebirth of the oh, athletic. Cool. 2.0. So, point on. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not done. It's just taking a nap. There you go. I had to take a little nap. Um, yeah. At some point, running your own business, you know this. Other people who run their own businesses know this. The only people that don't know this are the people that don't have their own businesses. It's a fucking struggle. Um, and at some point, we were like, fuck, we're running out of money. We need to get jobs. So at that point, Julie and I got jobs. I worked at a design agency called Cinco here in town, managed their the sort of internal or their their marketing as well as copywriting and 
such for them. And uh, Judy worked at a brand here in town called Bridge and Burn, which is like a apparel, like a fashion apparel brand. Cool. Um, and then her contract was sort of up. It was like a year contract. And she was looking around for jobs. And I was like, you know, our friend Mike Heenan, Castelli now works at Specialized. He he just said they're trying to hire an equipment marketing manager. Cool. And Julie, you know, she was a professional mountain biker. She knows equipment. Um, so she for that and got that job and started that in last February. And then, you know, I'm there to visit her. And while I was there talking to Spoke, like, we've got this open for this road marketing manager and you know I worked at road before I did all the athletic stuff so they were like you you know the road stuff you should you should um apply job and I was kind of like well you know I'm trying to let Judy do her own thing and it seems like and they were they laughed they were like she's fucking fine like she's she's owning that shit about her Don't worry about and I was like, oh, yep, yeah, okay. Sick. So, I, it, and it's weird because, it, you know, we started down this path right when COVID really kicked off here in the in the U.S. in March. And then um, I accepted the job and started working in, in June. So it's been June, July, August, September, four months now. Um, wow. The road and gravel marketing manager for Specialized. That's cool. I mean, dream job? Cool. Is that a weird way to... I mean, of course you work there, so you're not going to be like, nah, fuck this, thing sucks. <laughs> you're like, I wish I was something else. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey, dumb no, question. you're right, I'm not. Um, I, I like it. It's super to start a job in the middle of a global pandemic. Oh, so, you know, and you miss yeah. like one of the things I was super excited about was like, maybe we can move down there and do lunch rides every day. And, you know, they've got crazy operation going on down there. I was really excited about it. Cool. Um, but, you know, we're still in here in Portland and making it happen. I'm very thankful that we have jobs. Um, it's a, it's a great company and you know, they make rad stuff. Um, and I'm stoked to be, to be marketing it and and working with a bunch of super cool people that are making it happen. Yeah, so, is it? Yeah. I, I've always wondered what it because when you run your own business, you got to hustle constantly. And I always have kind yeah. of wondered, like, oh, I could probably do corporate <clears throat> life. Like, it's kind of just the same grind, except the money's better and consistent. <laughs> like, is that? Yeah, it's like somebody. It's like. Um, if you get to payday and you have had employees like we did, you pay and you make sure that you always pay your employees. Right. Yeah. If there's nothing left over, you don't get paid as the, as the yeah. business owner. And that happened so many times. Right. And it's that fucked up thing where you're like, you can't go in and be like, you guys should be thankful. Cause I'm fucking paying you and not myself. Right. Um, but you know, it's a struggle. So it's cool to have a have a job that is, you know, mm -hmm. some somewhat steady and I mean definitely steady and a steady paycheck and you know, cool things to think about and work on every day. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I'm into it. Sounds fun. Like, like people. I don't know. Just sounds cool. A lot of resources. A lot of like big projects. I'm sure there's a lot of responsibility and, and like accountability too but mm, no different than any other job <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i mean i jumped i jumped in there and you know a month later we launched that new the new tarmac sl7 so it was like yes. full on like coordinating photo shoots with peter sagan and julian alaphilippe and you know the Williams brothers and getting cool. Alonzo to shoot the Williams brothers behind ah, the scenes. And that's great. You know, it was like, that was you guys. Yeah, it was, or you. 
And it's fun to like step in and be like, oh, I, I yeah, I know some folks that can make this happen. Let's Love do it. it. Sick. Fucking awesome. And also, too, like a, you know, like a thousand foot view of the whole thing. It's fucking cool. Like, we have been so down with cycling for so long. And now we're kind of the ones just like steering all the ships. Like, we're the older people. In the, I don't know, that's like a dumb way to say it, but it's it's cool to be like, oh, whoa, like, we've, we're all around the same age, you know, so we're all like, oh, like, Jeremy's at Specialized, this person's over there, like, you know, it's just, like, weird, like, how the fuck did that happen? <laughs> or a dog's over at Richie, and... Exactly. We could do that all day. <laughs> right, but it's yeah, cool, because no, we all, it, we, we started from, like, you know, messengers and dirt bags, and we just love cycling so much that we inevitably stay in the fucking thing and then you meet people and i don't know it's just cool to see how it all integrates into itself uh absolutely you know i julie and i kind of joke with each other because we were like you know we had jobs outside of the industry for that year there and we were like we're so stoked to be outside of the bike industry oh, and interesting. You know, actually money and stuff and not having to worry about all that. And then like you realize too, you're like trying to sneak out and go for bike rides during work. And people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you wearing those tight pants? Yeah. You know, interesting. Stuff like that. And, and then you're like thinking about, you know, I was thinking about applying for this job, especially as in like talk, you know, so you talk to a bunch of people that work there and, they're like, yeah, we we go ride bikes every day at lunch. I'm like, so cool. dude, sign me up. Sick. I want to go ride bikes every, at lunch and like not have somebody make me feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's really exciting. Huh. Yeah, it's it's cool to see that and be part of it, you know, in in a good way. Because even at the design agency, like we're they work on tons of outdoor brands, but there's still like, there's a few people there that definitely live it, that, that sort of like talk about outdoor stuff and live the outdoor stuff, but the rest of them do not. <laughs> That's a really good point that a lot of people that steer the, the ships of the brands within cultures, I, I was, cycling is kind of, I would say an asterisk to that, but a lot of the, like the adventure outdoor stuff, they don't really do the thing. And it's fucking right. weird because you're like, like, I live the culture I am a part of. Like, I don't know another way to do it. That sounds so, so like soul detaching to me. Like, I just fucking, even if you were like making stuff for cycling, but I don't like, I would prefer to be like playing Magic the Gathering. Like, get the fuck out of there. Go play Magic. Yeah. Yeah. And like, figure out how to have a job where you're playing magic all day, you know, like yes. something that's not going to, if you're sitting somewhere at a job, like pining about something else the whole time, like go do that. And I know that's hard to, you know, say and hear, you know, I, I joke about the, like, there's tons of podcasts out there that are, that are like to motivate you to live your best life and do all of that shit. You know, and you should just be doing what you love. And, and but it's fucking true in that sense. Yeah. Know? Or I feel like the words that I want to say is it's possible. So it's just sure. It's really just about how much you want to do it. But know that you can that one can do it. It's not this sure. like, oh, that's not for me. It's like, oh, well, you've just it'll never happen because you because one has already quit. Like, it's possible. Totally. Yeah, and that reminds me of the whole anything that you want to be good at, you just have to do it over and over and over. And in the beginning, it sucks to do it because you're not good at it. And no matter what, if you keep doing it, you'll just get good at it. I say this a lot, but I, I know this to be – that is the secret weapon to being good at anything you want to be good at is just fucking do it. Yeah, over and over. And so the trick is to find something that you like doing, even if you don't enjoy or even if it's hard to do like cycling, cycling is such a cool example because it's 
It's super hard to do, period. In the beginning, it's hard, but you know what? You do it all the time, it's still fucking hard. <laughs> it's just... Agreed. It is, yeah, I agree. Your butt's going to hurt for a while there. And your legs, and you'll feel like shit, and, like, it doesn't change. But you do get, like, a natural high from it, which is uh, kind of addicting. I feel like you get... I feel like you get a natural high from a lot of things, bro. Like? <laughs> Mostly weed. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I guess that is a natural high. I like that. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> is it not? It is. It, 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 touche, my friend. Touche. I've seen those plants in your backyard. They are ginormous. I love growing weed. Okay, this is an interesting one. Recently, I've been kind of slowing down on the weeds and thinking that nobody Meaning. nobody talks about the side effects of weed, the byproducts of weed. So we've gone through this thing like the war on drugs. Drugs are bad. And then, so okay, all drugs are bad. Okay, and then weed is legal. Then it's like weed will cure everything. And then <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute. Like where's the balance? Because I think too much of a good thing is not a good thing. I don't know. Just thinking like, what are this, you know, like uh, mood swings, depression, like it it, it can fuck with you. So it's the balance. Do you find find yourself addicted to weed? Not addicted, but I find myself having mood swings and depression and thinking like, oh, it's probably because I'm like, like consuming cannabis a little bit too much. Like there's a balance Mm -hmm. there. All right. Have you ever noticed that? Do you ever want to talk about it? Um, let's talk. Have you ever noticed um, like mood swings or depression from cannabis consumption? No, but I'm like, <clears throat> uh, it's not a daily basis thing for it saying for you either. Um, like I can't really do a ton of high functioning work day to day and be high at the same time for sure same so, so i keep it to riding bikes <laughs> mostly not bad um and going to the movies <laughs> my, my secret my secret blog that i'm always that i've always wanted to start is called stoned at the movies okay i think we, I think we talked about it what movie did we go see us. Oh, and we got high as fuck. And I tried to record it, and maybe I'll make a... Oh, I could do a members-only, like, sloppy edit of that. I got too stoned. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, explain the blog, though. It's It was... Um, so the idea is... You smoke weed, then you go see a movie and review the movie. But what you try to do is pair the strains of weed because I was like kind of laughing to myself at, you know, you go to a dispensary and you just see the craziest shit, the craziest names for everything. Yeah. So I was thinking like, let's pair it up for the movie. For example, we went and saw my, my buddy Moy and I saw... The, the the planet the most recent of the apes and we smoked gorilla glue so it was just trying to find some funnies to be like here's the strain of the day and then i was like this is a really sellable saleable thing like i should be reviewing strains for dispensaries i like that at the movies right? at the movies Oh, I love it. You could have an alter ego to, or a, in a non de plume. <laughs> you like the alter egos, don't you? <laughs> what would your a non de plume be for the, the weed reviewer? Because as a side note, Jeremy is like um, one of his mediums as an artist is writing. He's a writer. And that blows my mind because I don't think in that way. But he's very much a writer or an artist of words, which is so mind boggling to me. But what would oh yeah so i started some of it can i ask you a side question before i go down this road no 
I'm just kidding, yes. <laughs> How do you start out your notebooks? Like, when oh, you that's start a, a new notebook. Cool. I, I always wonder about this because, like, I, I use a lot of notebooks in writing, and I like to draw, too, but I always start them out the same way because I struggle with the with the first page. Love that. What's your, what's your approach? I can show you. Oh, cool. Oh, it's not, it's not groundbreaking. I just always write it on the, I fucking love it on the notebooks. There's probably, there's a bunch more of them here. I'm sure. I love this. You know, what's funny is I'll skip the first page and just start on the second. Right. That's that, that works too. I'm but then you've got that blank page, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I. Okay, here's one. Do you often look back at your notebooks? Do you ever look back at your notebook? Yeah, all the time. How, how so? Like, what, what's the practice? <clears throat> well, in my current job, current role, you're just talking to a lot of people all the time. So I try to take notes in a lot of different places. And and then I know it's funny too, because when you start visually, like when you're taking notes sort of from a visual standpoint, there's all these like things about draw drawing your notes, illustrating your notes. It helps you remember the pages that they're on. You know, I'm like, I'm like, oh. Like I'll remember a page like this. Oh sick. Just because I know that there, you know, I was like, oh, I was talking about the Panormal crew and the new Sagan collection. And wait, wait, wait. Pa That's how you pronounce that? Pas Panormal? Yes. My yeah. Pas Normal is what I've always pas thought. Pas Normal? Hey, yes, Normal. Okay. Anyways, because you saw that and you, oh, you remember it because of the image that you drew with it. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking cool. Interesting. But this notebook that I just opened up, one of the one of my first entries, I, over the winter I was trying to like do a, like a illustrated journal. Oh, a visual journal. Or like yeah, visual like note taking. This, yeah, I got this Whoa. really cool book. He's getting the book, ladies and gentlemen. Please hold tight. Well, I got the book. Oh, there it is. What's I it called? I got the book. Show it to the children. It's called, it's called Making Comics. Oh, I like this. Cool. And it's, and it's by Linda Berry. And her, I think, zine and thing is called Quarterly. <laughs> and it, she just has a lot of, like, fun cool. note-taking and okay. exercises, like Good. exercises. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I had an idea for a comic, which is why I bought this. And cool. then to figure out how people write and make comics. It's um, gnarly. It's comic book artist. It's super gnarly. It's yes. super gnarly. They're gnarly. It's so hard. Yes. But I was doing this visual, I was doing this visual journal Still this the was movies. Oh my god, the dangle pipe. Oh, this is so can I hold it? <laughs> can I hold it? Yeah. It's so good. Exactly. Oh my god, we this might is need one to make of my a favorite movies from last year. <gasps> I just had an idea. Yeah. And not to steal your drawing thunder away, but this is just a thought that just came to me. What if you wrote some kind of story and I illustrated it? Uh, that could that could work. I think that's how a lot of comics work. <laughs> I think so too because the writing I can't fucking like it stops there for me. Like I don't know what to do. But if there was a story, oh, see? perfect, cool. Like um, and also like if you had a visual cue or style that you were like, oh, this would be cool to turn into a story. You mm -hmm. could bring that to me, and I could say, oh, this yeah, let's do it like this. What about like a nursery rhyme? Like, cause, cause some kind of like old school nursery rhymes are actually pretty fucked up, which is so cool. Yeah. I don't have a good example, but maybe like the lady that lived in a shoe or something. I don't know. It's like, or a, the, you know, the, the class, the old classic, the tattooed sailor. Oh, I don't know this. 
No, it's not. It's a book that I have right here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but how cool is that? Oh, that is cool. I dig it. Walt right? Kelly. Goes down to his feet, too. Ooh, that's good. He I has, really want to get tattooed by you, by the way. I want to do it, too. I mean, we just basically yeah. need to make the time. Maybe, I know. Maybe even this weekend. Then it turns into like, oh, I'm going out of town this weekend. Oh. I'm not going anywhere. Cool. All right. Okay, wait, Do you think the smoke will be cleared that we can sit outside somewhere? God. <laughs> I know. Now the idea is like, man, imagine. remember back in the day when you could sit outside and breathe fresh air? I know. Jeez. It's funny, too, because you, you, like, took that granted. Like, you, you took... Did I freeze for a second? No, no, you got it. With the with the pandemic, you took a lot of. Th you realized that you were taking a lot of granted. Yes. And and one of them was not like oh, going outside and breathing fresh, fresh air. air. I can still do that. <laughs> and now you're like, fuck! I can't even do that now. Yeah, I it's... think psych survived the pandemic yes. way better than anyone else. Yes, to the point of like, yeah, it's just like slightly inconvenient. Meh. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I can go for a ride anytime. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be away from my, you know, I've been away from my Zoom for a little bit. Yeah, you're like, what is it? For a bike they call it a, what is it, a, like a personal health day or self-help? Yeah. There's a, there's exactly. a hot phrase there that I'm for not saying. A mental, a mental health day. Yes. Like, oh, I need to just, like, check in with myself for the next three hours. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do, a, let's do another rando question. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, this one is so perfect for you because Jeremy's such a movie nerd in the best, in the most loving way. Like a movie buff, I guess is the way you would say it. Uh, I, like, I like nerd because I, I love every movie. I'm not like a, oh, exactly. you can like a certain style of rosebud i love that right high brow to low brow brow all of its all of its fair game yeah i think i'm feeling this double ipa okay the question is what movie title best describes your life and i guess i would say I mean, at, I... at this moment because you know so did the movies that's not a movie title no it is it's right there Uncut, Uncut Gems? Gems? Is that actually a movie? It's a fucking amazing movie. Oh, cool. You need to see it. Okay. It's so stressful. Oh, it's God, like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> no, but it's stressful in a good way. It's stressful in a cinematic way. Like, it keeps the, it, the flow keeps moving so fast that you're just like, oh, my God, what's next? What's next? Cool. Um, oh, I really, you're... Stoke in the fire for me to edit up, make like a chunky little thing from the Stone of the Movies that, it, that it's going to be awkward, but I'm okay with that. No, that's fine. Okay. Awkward is good because it's real. Yes. Like, when you see true. someone being awkward, you're like, well, at least I know that they're, <laughs> this isn't rehearsed, like, you know? It's all I've got going for myself, Jeremy. As soon as I get comfortable with this, it's all down the tubes. I mean... You and me both. <laughs> okay. Let, let, Uncut I, Gems. Yeah. It's, I, I get stressed about a lot of shit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like, my wife likes to remind me that I'm like a stressful person oftentimes to be around. Um, and I think <laughs> Uncut Gems has that sort of, it's a super stressful movie. And it kind of alludes to like, rough around the edges but you know something cool inside um so yeah let's go let's go with uncut gems all right i wrote it down so that's a, I, it's on the list okay this is another good question i like these random questions because uh i don't know they give you insight into things that you don't normally know about these people well, that are close to you already wait say it again I, these questions are cool because you, you learn things about your friends is the simplest oh, way to yeah, say it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And and we're like friends. I fucking enjoy being around you every time that I am. 
but we haven't spent massive amounts of time together, you know? So, yeah, but I, I I also think that it's, uh, it's almost like a a consistency, I think is the name of the game, which I guess also adds up to the cumulative time, but we've stayed, we're consistently friends. I don't know how to say that. Like we connect consistently over time, which to me, that's like, Oh, that's a friend. An acquaintance is someone that you, like, see, and then, like, you don't really, you know, and you see him again, you're like, oh, yeah, I enjoy that person, but you don't really keep up with them, which is is fine. Those people are awesome, too, but, you know, life kind of automatically organizes itself in a funny way. Yeah. Tangent. Holy shit. No, let's hit this random question. Go. Okay. What website do you most often visit? What, am I supposed to say the Radivist? Is that a trick question? That's kind of what I thought you would say. Is that a is that a true answer? Is that true? No. Yeah. No, no I, I enjoy it. I think it's the best place for industry bike news out there. Yeah, but that's not... It, so, okay. Uh, shocker. For people that live the cycling life, I, a lot of us tend to, like, get our, like, escape fix from, like, other things. Mine is skateboarding. I think yours is maybe basketball. Uh, I'm, there's a game on right now I'm getting stressed about. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hurry, let's wrap this up. I got to get to Okay, uh, <laughs> yep, uh, yes. Answer is yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> is that the last question? <laughs> um, I like basketball. I love watching basketball. Um, I love okay, playing. this is a cool question. What do you love about basketball? I mean... Like professional, like professional NBA basketball or like playing it myself? I don't know because I don't, I don't see the magic in basketball. So, and I asked that question because at one point a friend of mine was really into hardcore music and I was like, I don't get it. Like, what do you love about hardcore music? And he told me and I could see it and I was like, oh, and then I started to enjoy it. So totally. what do you love about basketball? Like all of it, any of it, one part, all the parts. I love playing it because I feel like I'm still learning how to play it. Like, it's one of those things where you're, like, always evolving and, like, trying to learn a new move or, like, you connect on a pass that you didn't think was possible and you're like, oh, my God, that feels good. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, you just, like, have a rough week and you go and play pickup basketball with a bunch of folks and – you make a couple baskets and you're like, I feel like I'm contributing to this thing we call life now. (laughs) (laughs) And it feels good. We've been doing that. Our pickup basketball game here for like 10 years, nine years. Okay. What Um, does pickup basketball mean? Well, it's just like we play a, it's not a, it's not organized by a local organization and with refs and stuff. It's just like, a bunch of dudes playing hoops together. Dudes and ladies. Cool. A bunch of people playing hoops together. Um, but we started in PDW's warehouse. Oh, uh, rad. Random. They got, yeah, they got a donation of uh, this, like, college-level super pro hoop. that, Or, like, somebody was like, we're going to throw this out unless you want it. And they were like, oh, I got a warehouse, so we might as well <laughs> throw it in there. Um, and we would go and, and play hoops there every Thursday night, best night of the week and drink beer and eat Pringles and Twizzlers. Tight. I don't know why that was the thing. You probably smoke weed and play basketball. Do you smoke weed and get basketball? I do now. I didn't then. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I love to smoke weed and play basketball. That's for sure. That's cool. Oh, I would yeah. love to play with you guys, but I feel s- super intimidated and way behind the, pardon the pun, behind the ball because I've never, I don't even have the right shoes. Well, I think you're trying to say behind the eight ball and that's maybe like a pool reference versus a basketball. Okay. Okay. Right. Do I need other equipment for this, for this statement or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, you should, if you want to come, you should come and play with it. I like to say that it's, um, a bunch of bike nerds that play hoops. So, because people are always like, "Well, I haven't played basketball f- 
since high school. I'm like, yeah, most of us too. Right. You know, we just, we've been doing it for the last 10 years, but before that we were like, I haven't played since high school. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's, it's always very awkward with a bunch of, you know, almost middle-aged dudes trying to do something that is oftentimes super athletic. Right. You know? <laughs> in, a, in a way, cause I would say that, that a lot of the people that go are probably, you know, the cyclists are athletic, but in a very different way. For sure. They can run all day, but then when you throw a ball at them, they're just like, like the ball just goes flying. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I, and that's also why I like it. You know, I think it's a, you spend a lot of time being a cyclist and you're just like doing this one thing over and over and over like this. Totally. Um, and it keeps the hand eye coordination going. Like it, it's some good impact. Um, it's super fun. And then I love watching the NBA because I think there's just so many fun personalities cool. that are, that exist within the players and the organizations. And they do cool things like switch up their jerseys every couple of games. So there's like, that's cool. It looks cool. Um, they care about shoes. They care about shoes, which is a big thing to me. Um, and it's really fun. It's cool to see people at the sort of height of their sort of athletic prowess. Love that. Like going at it. Um, yeah, playing hoops, making crazy shots. The, yeah. the, the game that's on right now is the Celtics, the Boston Celtics versus the Miami Heat. And that game, so this is the playoffs, so oh. it's a series. Oh, shit. This is the second game in that series. One of the craziest things I've ever seen in my entire life watching basketball is this crazy block to win the game. Oh, wow. You know, it's like, like two seconds left, and guy is going up for what looks to be just like a – dunk to win the game Whoa. and the guy from the other team comes out of nowhere whose name is bam comes out of nowhere and just blocks the shit out of him and that guy loses the game like the emotion that the, like the arc of emotion that was within those two seconds just like i was like screaming like crazy yeah. this is amazing so yeah my dog and my wife hate it when I watch basketball every day. Just I scream and I clap and I, and I hate people that clap. So, you know, yeah, basketball. Dig it, dig it. Okay, I have some, I have questions that I got from someone and then I get some weird questions here too. Okay, how do you, this, sorry if this just super changes the pace here, but what about, um, how do you deal with jealousy? We're going over here. Now we're going over there. How do I deal with jealousy? I, I, I'm personally asking this one. I just personally want to know. In your in in myself. Yeah, because you know like, who, who else would? Yeah, yeah. How do you well, deal I don't with know. it? Maybe you like, don't deal with it. I don't know. If a couple people on the street were fighting about something, and I was like, "What are you fighting about?" and they were like, "Jealousy," you're like, "How do you deal with jealousy?" <laughs> Well, okay, good, good, good point. Well, um, no, because we're all human. We all jealousy is a thing. Nobody, I don't. Love I think it. people that good point. Really don't get jealous about things or don't trust those people. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. Verbally, vocally, try just try to like communicate. Talk about it. Yeah. Communicate. Um, I, I, I used to get. I used to get super jealous about the like, you know, affections of others, you know, like don't look at my girlfriend style. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but that's just weird. And now that, you know, you're, once you're in like a great relationship where that you realize like, Oh, that was something else that I was dealing with. I feel like jealousy is always like, Pointing at something else, not really yeah, the Yeah, I like that. Okay, so did you no, find so I feel that, like did you figure out what that something else was? Um in the case of like partners, you mean? 
Yeah, and you don't even have to explain what it was, but did you figure out... Because you hear this a lot with, like, psychology and stuff. It's like, oh, you dig it down, and it's, like, it's deeper than all of this. But recently, I've been I, like, well, what's the thing that... Like, what's underneath all of it, then? Yeah. Like, what are you fucking... I mean, I think it was... For? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at the time, I, it was my own... It was my own impropriety that I was dealing with. You know, okay, like, I was sense. not acting... That, I was not acting that way, like, a a nice or right way towards my girlfriend. And then, so then when I, I would automatically assume that other people are doing the same thing, you know? Ah, uh, sure, sure, sure. Oh, it's almost like a mirror in a weird way. Totally. Yeah, interesting. Okay, we'll balance that with some super random other question. Jealousy, jealousy is like a, yeah, it's like a bright light and a mirror Ooh, shining back like on your own problems. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, this one. I, I like the super random. Are you an organized person? No. Really? No. Jesus. Jesus. No Jesus is his answer. No Jesus. <laughs> Jesus H. Organization. Okay. No. That's fine. I'm pretty. I. I mean, it's like, what is organization? Like, I, I like to be, you know, I feel like I'm pretty dialed in some respects about certain things, and then other things, like, other things, I'm not. You yeah. Know? I have like stacks of books everywhere because I love books and I love having them around. But I'm also like, you know, yeah. No, I that's want- a real answer. Super real answer. <laughs> You're like some Isn't stuff. It? Yeah. Like I put my fuck, I fold my clothes, but then I got like shit all over my desk. Like what's organized. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't make up the questions. I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just here to relay them into your face. <laughs> this is kind of a weird question. I feel like I would have a hard time with this one. So that's why I want to ask you. Uh, I mean, the last couple ones you've asked, like got pretty deep anyway. So deep. go. Yeah. All right. Well, what quirks do you have? Which is a tricky one because it's self ref. You know, you gotta you gotta turn that mirror back on that self. No noises. Oh, I, I think have- that's just part of being like an older male. You're just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen here, Sonny. I want to tell you something about me. Say again. Or just like standing up. You're like. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> my old bones. <laughs> um, no, I like I get. I'm sometimes I'm just like noises just make me crazy, especially oh. in the morning. I'm a I'm I'm someone who stays up late. Okay, it's just some, has always has been. Yeah. My mom jokes that like um, she used to f- like fall asleep and I wait would wake up and I'd be like reading her stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> totally, just like oh, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, you didn't even the book was upside down, and you know, um, <laughs> but yeah. That, I mean, that's a quirk. I stay up late always, um, and then in the morning I'm just like, quiet, everyone, quiet. Oh yeah, totally. But, yeah, I don't know. What kind of quirks do you have? I'm ooh, sure ooh. more. I can tell. Wait, I can tell you um, a pet peeve because I've recently learned of it. Oh, interesting. A new one. <laughs> it's a new pet. It's, yeah, a new pet peeve. Um, it is. Maybe did I kind of learn it during this quarantine? <laughs> COVID taught me this. Okay, so it's also a movie. It's also a movie thing. So movies, when in movies and television, people say things like, and they, you say this in real life too, and it annoys the shit out of me. People say, do you mind if I come in? Like, hey, do you mind if I come in? And people say, yeah, sure. And then, and then they enter. And I'm like, why the fuck did you say yeah if you want me to come in? Like, do you mind? Yes, I mind. No problem. I'll, I'll check you later. Ah, it's grammatical. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. 
I don't, I do not mind. Come on in. But people do it in movies and it becomes a pet peeve for me because that's written into the movie. It didn't just happen. Wrote it. Yeah. So someone had to write that down and then be like, okay, say this. And then they're like, cool, I should say this. Yes. Come on in. Yeah. You imagine being the actor and you're like, well, actually he would say, no, I don't mind. They're like, (laughs) shut up you. We pay you to act, not to think. (laughs) That's not the line. Shut your face. Get back to work. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What are some of yours? Okay, quirks that I have. I'm loud as fuck. And I just realized that within the last, like, few years. I didn't realize that I was so loud. But Wait, for- people don't tell you? No. that's. I love that Whoa. you said that. I love that you said that. There's a lot of I, things. Well, yeah, go ahead. I feel like I'm constantly telling people to be quiet. I mean, we just <laughs> talked about this. <laughs> Did, well, you didn't tell me to be quiet. No, because you're, uh, you know, over. Because you, you, you and I, whenever we get together, we're usually both super animated about something. <laughs> you know, we're like, oh my God, did you see this thing? Did you see this thing? So, yeah, we're just like screaming at each other, like, ah, they're like, are those guys fighting? Be like, I think they're like hanging out. <laughs> right. But, um,. Yeah, I feel like I tell people all the time, like, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to yell. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I, that uh, opens up a bigger thing of I kind of wish people would just say what they fucking feel a little more often. Like if someone's too sure. loud, just say, you're, yo, you're too loud right now. I'd be like, oh, cool. I had no idea. Thank you. Hell, you're killing me. You're so loud right now. <laughs> or just, you know, I have a, people I have a good are too friend, polite. Clint. I think you know Clint. Clint Culpepper. Oh, yes. He's, so loud but now he knows that he's loud because people tell him he's super loud so then he's like okay yeah sorry <laughs> yeah like people don't know we're tra- we're all trapped inside of ourselves so if a friend of yours is doing some weird shit like maybe they swear too much or they spit a lot or i don't know totally you're just like yo i don't know if you've ever noticed this like i said this to a friend of mine recently was like he was saying something super judgmental. I think it was about like music. Like, oh, whoever listened, like that genre is fucking dumb because of this and that. And I was like, yo, hold up. I'm going to tell you this because I want people to do this to me. So what I'm going to tell you, I want you to do to me. And it's going to sound intense, but people don't say shit like this. And I was like, what you just said is super judgmental. No one genre is like dumb or bad or whatever. That's like living in a box. Totally. So, like, it, this is an opportunity to think beyond yourself, which, I don't know, maybe that's pretentious. And No, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's fine. You know, we're, we're living in a world right now where uh, finally racism is becoming a thing that people are like, it's at the front of everything that you see every single day. And, and you have to have super blunt and real conversations with people you know like yeah. that's racist like that that old joke that everyone that is you know wants to that wants to change things have been making for the last however many years we've been making these jokes is like you can't say that anymore like right. you can't say that you know like I, I feel like I say that to people so often like you can't say that You can't say things like, I'm just going to go off the reservation on this one. I'm like, no, you can't say that. Think about what you're saying and adjust what you're saying because it may, it comes from a fucked up place. Right. Yeah, that's cool. So that means if you're saying that a lot, you're actually helping change, make change, positive change. I honestly, I really hope so. Because it's like, uh, it sometimes doesn't feel like it because it doesn't feel you don't see the change happening. Yeah. And it'll um, feel people are like, don't tell me what to do. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a lot of work to be done on, on this front by everyone, by myself included. Right, you know, right. Think about how much, how many times you, we used to say the word ghetto for things like, Oh my God, that bike build is so ghetto. Like, right. And then you're like, Oh, when you start to really think about where, some of that phrasing comes from you're like yeah i'm not gonna say that anymore 
Yeah, right. Which is part of the that's the work and that's the progress. And it's you know it's not easy. It's fucking hard and awkward and like we said before, things that are awkward and hard are actually good. <laughs> totally, it's something that I say to people on rides all the time. That I when I'm doing new kind of rides with new people that I don't ride with often, I ask them how they're doing. You know, especially sort of late in the day when you're riding with people on big rides yeah. and then i always remind them like I'm, just so you know i'm asking how you're doing because most of the time i'm sort of on the edge too <laughs> and so yeah we're in this together i'm not like like asking you how you're doing because i'm like you look like shit you know i'm like how you doing okay let's talk about how we're both doing maybe that's a better way to say it like how how, how are we doing here <laughs> Yeah, or I wonder too. Maybe s- starting off with like, man, I'm, this is, I'm having a hard time right now. What about you? And it kind of totally. opens the door to like, oh, really? You are also like, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe it's like, and and I've been there before, so I'm asking you that. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. That's how are you doing? Because the first time I did a hundred mile ride, I fucking bonked so hard that I was like literally like knocking on doors looking for candy really yeah it it was um at a tiny little hill in massachusetts outside of boston called strawberry hill paint the paint the picture what year is this is this during that event that you were just talking about (laughs) what what year is this how old is this little journey this had to be 2000 and maybe three or four cool Probably four, maybe five. I don't know. Okay. I, I was doing this. I was doing like a kind of a longer bike ride. I just sort of, you know, started turning the bike rides from like 30, 40, 50 miles to like 60, 70, 80 miles. Oh, cool. Grad- perfect way to do it. Well, not really on purpose. It was just like started riding with different people that were like, hey, I'm going to go do this 100 mile ride on Saturday. Do you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, that seems like a lot, but all right. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do I do? Like, uh, I got a bunch of candy bars. I got a 7 jersey because I'm, you know, fighting the man. Um, and I don't know that it's an actual cycling team. Um, but, yeah, we were doing this. And everybody was talking about this hill, this strawberry hill. Oh, it's like so this cool little climb. Psyching you know. it out? Were they like, it's so hard. Well, uh, and I was like, all right, let's do this. And the the person that we were riding, this friend that we were riding with is this guy, Alex Whitmore in Boston that I re- ended up racing with for a long time. And he owned a, this, he owns a chocolate brand in, cool. in Boston called Taza Chocolate. Cool. Um, he every he was kind of like the stud cyclist that we were riding with you know they were like he crushes it up this climb every time we do it he always drops all of us right so i'm like i gotta fucking stay with this guy oh shit i know how this works like they're vetting me out i need to like i'm gonna stay with him i'm gonna go up this climb and he just fucking shoots up this climb when we get to it and I'm like staying with him, staying oh, with shit. him, staying with him right to the end, sort of pop, but make it there, you know, in front of all these guys. And I'm like, he's not so tough. And maybe like two miles down the road, I just fully fell apart. Like wow. I was like, I was like, you know, you're just like pedaling squares <laughs> and like, just like this sucks. I'm like out of water. Like I'm just, done you know and so we pulled over to the side of the road and i was like kind of like wobbly leg trying to get off my bike and do that whole thing um and like we just went up to somebody he it maybe was like this guy we were riding with was maybe like oh i think i I know somebody that lives over here Um, but really we were just like knocking on doors like do you guys have like a (laughs) coca-cola Something that's going to help me get through the day. And people are looking at you like, what is wrong with this dude? Is he like, um, what's happening with this man? Wait, did someone have anything? Yeah, like oh, Cokes and Snickers and 
I mean, this is America, right? Like right. you can knock on a door and the, somebody's got to have trash food in their house. That's like a, like a grandma's like wet dream. Like some little skinny guy yeah. wants candy. <laughs> like here, exactly. taking all the candy. <laughs> I'm going to fatten this boy up. Get in, get in here. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny. That's funny. Um, well, we did our hour. I don't know. Maybe are we done? You got anything else no, you want to? I mean, come on. I feel like we're just getting started. Oh my god! I keep blowing out the mic too. Sorry, sorry, future everybody. You do or I do? Me, because I'm loud, which I realized recently. What? Uh, tell me some other ones. Other what? Quirks? Yeah. I swear a lot. I don't know if that's a. Quirk. Is that a quirk? I don't know. Maybe it's a habit. What's it do? Okay, here, that's a good, what's a quirk? I love doing this. Is Ellie like, is she like, Dustin, I feel like you swear too much. Define quirk. Um, it's a power meter that goes on your bike and, uh, oh no, that's quirk. <laughs> a peculiar behavioral habit. So habit. Swearing, but I feel like swearing is such a part of the zeitgeist of culture that that, that is not a quirk. Yeah, like yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty broad. I feel like a quirk is something that when you watch a movie about some, like, you know, guy who's in love with a blow-up doll, that's a quirk. <laughs> oh, so you want to know about my banana fetish? No, that's a real movie. It's a Ryan Gosling movie called Lars and the Real Girl. <laughs> yeah, write that one down. I can't see what you're doing. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to explain this to me. This is a different setup. I, I get to look up. at the wall. I know. He's not looking at anything. He's staring at the ceiling. He's staring at nothingness, which it's I don't know. There. It's there every day. Everyone's, wake up. everyone's watching us. They get to see you. They get to see me. They get to see the drawing in the middle. Everyone's happy. But I don't need the drawing so I can see what oh, you're doing. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that all happened during this conversation? And more! <laughs> Holy shit, dude, that's rad. We got I Johnston, how... Langston, Benz, Uncut Gems, the first page. Yeah. And then I just have a book of frogs that I was looking at, which I just... See, and I need prompts. So I love how you did... You, most of the time it feels like you just pull it out of thin air and you've got like a like a bag of characters that you go to cowboy guy, you know, cyclist people. Um, Wait, do you mean prompts for drawing or for talking yeah. or what, what for? For drawing. Oh, dude, I never know what to draw. It's that's the most stressful part of drawing. So you do struggle with that. A hundred percent. That is the oh, absolute God, I love to, hardest thing. I love thing. to hear that. The hardest thing is what to draw. A hundred percent. I love that. I love hearing that. That makes me feel so good. It's so fucking hard. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to draw? There's too many things to draw. And you're like, oh. Look at this book. Look at this book. This will give you something. Oh. I'm that. telling you, I have lots of books on my fucking desk. Perry Roubaix. I, got, I have Batman on there. Look at this one. Oh, that's cool. I love that stuff. Thick to have you ever been to that? Have you ever been to that store, um, Monograph? Oh yeah, um, that's my spot. I like fuck, that's where I got this. Cool. That place is and amazing. Been, that's where I got this book too. That's fucking hilarious. The frog book? Yeah. Well, it's actually it's like a. I don't know what I think this might be Dutch. It's just animals, of just like, but they're it's from another language. It's Zap Zesana Julie. I don't know what it is. Her they I like, I like though that it's got a le, a little bit of art house in it too like it's not just like a peterson's guide to frogs it's like here's a bunch of cool shit that we found on top of some other cool shit like the penguin has like the penguin logo and it's penguin in whatever language yeah. that's in puck queen dude i need this book it's fucking cool i need that book um okay anything else you want to tell the people before we seal the deal wait we're done yeah, why not? <laughs> Cause I want to keep going. Well, what do you want? What do you want to tell us? You don't have any more um, random questions. I'm having too much fun. I was to just thinking. <laughs> I was just thinking I should go get another beer. 
Well, and I was thinking I could smoke the house out with this uh, roach that I have sitting in here. Yeah. Let's. Okay. You do that. Okay. Go. Welcome back. What did you just do? <laughs> what did you do while you were gone? I went outside and took a piss. I love pissing outside. I pee outside like nine times out of ten. Can't blame you. Can't blame you there. There you go. Do you think Need I say more? Do you think that you're that there's like a legitimate water savings to doing that? Yeah, bro. Because think about how gallons. many times you flush the toilet. In gallons, in gallons, in gallons. A hundred percent. This, I love this. This goes exactly in the same category of riding a bike opposed to driving a car. So you think that there's potential? Because I've had this idea for a while now that this could be a movement. <laughs> like pee outside could be a full on movement. Well, you know that brand, you know that brand drink water? Yes. That this could be pee outside could be that. I like this. <sighs> Um, because if you yeah. just imagine if you could convince 10 people, oh, so let's say you're Ten. saving I like that. Well, let's say you're saving 10 gallons a week. I don't know what it is. We could, we could really figure this out. You're right. Every time I pee, I should make a mark and then I could, uh, average over a week. Yeah. You just need to figure out how much your tank flushes and the whole thing. Yes. But it would be it could be like thousands of gallons of water. Absolutely. Per year per year. And if you got a hundred people to also do that. Boom. What else do you need to solve? Huh? We got right? ten minutes. What else? What else? Huh? <laughs> World hunger? Okay. What's next? These are the things that I tell my wife. This she if you asked her, she would be like, Yeah, he's been saying that for years. <laughs> the PL side? Yeah. Do you do it? All the time. Do you it's really? How I trained my, it's how I trained my dog to pee really? in our yard. I would go outside and be like, hey, dog, watch this. And he'd be like, He's like oh, I can oh, do that. Take that. Sick. Uh, okay, so I also, next level version of this is I built a, they call them a mulch basin. It's basically a composting urinal. It's a whole. I've, I've peed in it. A hole. <laughs> I'll explain it to people that don't know. It's a hole in the ground. Uh -huh. Think of like the size of a five gallon bucket. Just dig that out of the ground and fill it with mulch, which is like wood chips, basically. And then you you pee in that and that's it. And it does not smell that bad. It holds the moisture or it, it drains the moisture. It's the liquid, whatever that bad. It does not smell that bad. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on the time of year, actually. And, well, and where it's positioned. Like pee is, if you're going to pee in the same spot over and over, it's going to smell. Just don't put it right next to your back door then. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's manageable. It doesn't, it's not disgusting. Put it by some really stinky weed that is growing and then you'll, you'll be like, no, I smell stinky weed. <laughs> That's a good point for a part of the year. I mean, really the biggest hook is you, I, I, I want like a cover because it's fucking raining all the time here. That's true. What else did you do? That was it. We were we were only gone for like five minutes. What did you do? No, you also plucked some weed. Oh yeah, yeah. I get, <laughs> I did a little gardening. You pull the fan leaves off of the plants, and basically what that does is it saves work for you when you dry them out. They got to come off anyways, so you might as well get them now. Okay. And then it, right. you know they say it stops putting energy to these leaves that it's not really using anymore into the flower. Maybe this is true. Maybe this is just a thing that I do to make me feel like I'm paying attention to my plants. No, it's cool. I don't know. <laughs> You're like up I don't have a green thumb. So I'm always like interested when people are like talk about what they do to keep their plants alive. I, I should be thinking about plants way more than I do. Yeah, okay. That's interesting, right? Like I feel that too, but why is that because we know that that's actually a good thing you know what i mean like that's yeah. actually what's better for the planet and the world and la da 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 or is that something that we actually want to do i mean i would say both it's definitely better for the the planet but do you actually want to do that um 
I want to be more aware of it. I don't like I, I don't necessarily want to go be a farmer. No. Um, but I want to be aware of like what, you know, what is what what keeps the biosphere of your home, you know, in a, in the right fashion. I don't like. I'm reading a book about trees right now, and it's kind oh, of blowing cool. my mind. What uh, elaborate? It's called the Overstory. It's not. It's actually fiction, but it it won it won the Pulitzer Prize last year. Um, cool. And yeah, it's a it's it has like trees interwoven into the into the whole the fabric of the story because you know tr- and trees are fucking amazing you know they're interconnected underground they send Mm. each other messages they Mm. like you know connect to the mycelium down there Mm. the whole the whole bed of nature have you ever had ben on your podcast no i haven't i would love to you should whoa dude that talk about a stony baloney episode okay does this every time you hang out with Ben, are you just like blasted to the gills or do you have some sense of self-control? Well, here I've started a couple, doing a couple little uh, tricks myself to maintain. <laughs> Don't tell Ben. I just like, either I prepare before I see him. So I'm like, no good, no dude, I'm already high, like I'm cool. Or no, but part of the ritual is doing it with him. That's the we don't have that ritual together anymore. Really, in, in COVID world. Oh, but well, I mean, we've I done it. It's we. I, I just did it with you. Response to that is like taking like we when we rode the other time and you had just little joints for everyone. I was like, oh, that's yeah, that's perfect. And because I grow weed, I have too much weed, so I can just make joints for fucking everybody the thing is the biggest bitch of that is it takes time to make them (laughs) can you do a can you do a video a joint rolling video i started to go to the machine we'll do a video about that i love this idea i don't use a joint roller and i'm trash at rolling joints so like i use that the dangle the the ty cobb Oh, the little guy. Yeah, it's too, like, tweakery. You want to... I don't know. Each one has a thing. Like, smoking joints is harsher because there's just more shit going on. It's like smoking the paper and the thing. The thing is the the ritualistic side of a joint, unparalleled. It is quintessentially... Oh, I got, I'm stoned, so I'm losing my words. I want to say, like, magic or shamanic or spiritual or essence-filled or murka burka banga banga Murka burka banga is definitely where I would go to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, does your, is your audience pretty stony as well? That is a great question. Can we talk about them like they're not here right now with us? <laughs> I never do that. Okay. Are you stony? Let us you know in the know, comments. Like, people are not like, I'm not going to listen to old Dustin Klein anymore because he's a stoner. It's a mix. Or are they like, is, your, is it like, do, is your audience so like called down and they're just like, yeah, we feel you, bro. It's a mix. Are you there's, cool? There's some, <laughs> there's some, hey, if, are you cool? If so, let cool. us know in the comments below. Cool, <laughs> <laughs> dude. <laughs> They, um, I'll get comments that are like, I don't even smoke weed and I like watching your videos. Cause at one point I was consuming cannabis a lot more and I was putting it more in the videos, but I've slowed down. Okay. And now I'm starting to speed back. <laughs> I slowed down as I finish here, here light. You got, hey, you got a lighter. <laughs> I do right here. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. So that's my story. Stick you don't – so you – it's not a fully openly stoner – I mean, I'm just curious about the – about how the narrative has shifted for you. I mean, we grew up in this era of like 
it's like a secret thing. Weed like, is bad. Oh, yeah. You, I gotta like go ride across town and see my dealer, um, kind of thing. A hundred percent. And now it's just like I wa- I can walk down to the store and I'm like, what's up? Give me some of those gummies. And they're like, all right, cool. You got you doing more bike rides? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm doing bike rides. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, my thing recently has been, oh, I think that there needs to be a little more uh, conversation about the byproduct of cannabis, which is hilarious because I'm so pro-cannabis, but I think there needs to be a balance. Because too much w- weed, is it's, it affects everybody differently. That is the major disclaimer. Some people sure. are Absolutely. every day puff and tough and you're fucking level. But for some people, that's not true. For some people, you're frail and sp- fucking your body looks inept and you're more sensitive so things affect you differently sure uh not as i project my body image all over everybody are you saying i'm fucking frail i was talking about myself (laughs) i'm not frail um yeah no so tangent but it's interesting to hear it sounds like i mean this is the second time you've brought it up today dustin it sounds like it's something you're struggling with well, I think it was affecting my mood, like a little too um, much, and I didn't like that. To just like suddenly be like, "Oh, today I'm just like a jerk," because I'm my I'm moody. I'm, my fucking levels are off. I've been like altering my body with chemicals and shifting things. And then when you don't do it or don't have it, you're like, Arr. "All right, maybe do you, I don't know." You, do you use other drugs? Do you do other drugs? Okay, this is a good one. So, you do the- so I recently um, microdosing, microdosing, everybody microdosing. I'm like, okay, I'm down. I love mushrooms. I love psychedelics. Like, let's give it a try. Uh, so I, I acquired like the means to do this and had been doing it for several months. Honestly, didn't notice absolutely anything different. And I feel... Yeah, to just see how it could do. So I'm assuming that the dosage was too low and I never cared enough to like double it because then I start panicking about supply issues. So then I would have to do research on how to grow them myself. And like same with the cannabis. It's like I have this cycle going of things, specifically weed and mushrooms. Uh, um, I'm... I'm pretty stoned right now and I'm definitely rambling. How how is everybody actually, feeling? I don't about actually this? feel like I don't feel like you are. You, oh, you're so until you stopped talking, you were making perfect sense. Um I thank you for saying that because Yeah, I mean you are a stoner. <laughs> you are a stoner. <laughs> and we, you know, oftentimes we get in our own heads and need to be reminded that it's it's cool and it's all gonna work out Mm, love it true true also something very uh, wait so you didn't so you didn't feel like the mushrooms the microdosing mushrooms was a was working in the way that you thought it was supposed to be working it was like nothingness yeah it didn't i have the highest hopes like, yes, please change my life. Like, I almost to the point of if it was placebo. Like, I don't even, like, I want, I believe so hard that I need <laughs> something to get me going. A little something. Just a little bit. And if it doesn't come after months and months and months, it's like, I don't know. Like, what's the point? And then yeah. I also had the thought of, oh, is this altering my, like, uh, serotonin levels or things that I don't know about? Like, what goes up must come down. So like if I'm, if you're in, I'm assuming it's probably the cannabis is just too much up. You got to level out eventually. I mean, if you slow, if you take a break. Okay. Here's one. When I get high, I get fucking wound up. Okay. It's like cannabis amplifies whatever you already are to the 10th. I get wound up. Yeah. No, I've never noticed. (laughs) <laughs> that you get wound up or that I... no that you get wound up I, yeah. that was a joke I know, I, know. I know you get super wound up when you get high well buckle up everybody buckle up here we go um <laughs> but it's not bad like i like it like that's why i like going on rides with you and stuff is like you 
you bring a fair amount of energy to the table. Not everyone does that, you know, like there are, we, we used to joke about this during the Rafa Continental. There are Stoke brokers and there are Stoke moochers. And go on. They're both, I used to think like, I was like, I'm never going to be a Stoke moocher, but sometimes you need to be. Sometimes you're like, I'm like bumming out right now. I'm bonking. I'm, like not feeling good on this ride and I need a stoke broker there to broker me some stoke so I can mooch off it a little bit and get back to where I need to go. You know? Does that make sense? I fucking love this. Stoke there are stoke brokers that I have to give it to Cole Manus. You know Cole is the guy with the shaved head and all the Rafa photos, like the shaved head and the huge mustache. Sick. Yep which we actually like he ca- he cast in like yes in um what is that clear like a resin he cast it in a resin and then cut his mustache off it was so gross oh, that's disgusting because resin is like super toxic yeah and he's just like breathing that's it all like in that's dangerous <laughs> we we left it at the Rafa office though it was funny right like it was like let check out my mustache it's brilliant but the, dude, doing it's that like is the like truest insane hipster moment ever. Like we cast your mustache in resin. So for the P outside campaign 2022, I'm thinking that we, we go with this, the uh, blazing yellow. It's a good feel. And then um, tonic blue because it's soft and you know, we got to balance all, all markets. Dope. Wait for the what? The P outside campaign for 2022. Oh, um, yeah, P outside. I mean, yellow, too easy? I'm feeling no. it. I think it makes sense. Because also, you don't want it to be so bright, though, because you want to promote people being hydrated. Oh, oh I love that. <laughs> and when you're hydrated, your P is not so yellow. Oh, my God. Right? So Fucking we should be genius. promoting the color it should be should be optimal hydration yellow well uh i would say optimal hydration is clear personally no i know but there's still some there's still some color to it i feel like i'm yelling now (laughs) thank you god that means it's working exactly Um, did you smoke cannabis or no did you eat some earlier i ate some but i didn't smoke it oh so now actually it's about time for you Hour 20. What I was going to say is Thank for you. the mushroom side of it, maybe you need to like do a hero dose. Like a oh, heroic off. dose, which I'm super down with. Actually, I have been building up to that, honestly. And now All it's right. a supply issue. I don't have anything. But I've been doing research on how to uh, grow it because, duh. Then it's Dude, just- we, live in, we live in Portland. We can solve this for you tomorrow. Oh, I love that. Um, or I just want to learn how to fucking find them. For the love of God, they grow everywhere here, and I have to yell through this because what the fuck? They're yeah, everywhere. You should yell. You They're, should yell. They are everywhere. I swear to God, I need a pillow to scream into. But instead, but don't you think I'm gonna this scream? Is what I think. This. Selena's gonna calm me down. <laughs> I saw her once at an airport. Lucky I you. Stood, I stood right next to her. You're like, oh, can I smell you? Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> I saw, who's the other actress that I saw at an airport once? Are you asking me? Because I can definitely give this a shot. She's in the Fast and the Furious movies. Never seen them. Dude, they're so good. Damn it, they're really? So good. Are they? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just like outlandish fantasy oh, worlds. Oh, it's like candy. Something comes off of mountains. Okay. Well, I guess but so. I they're, don't know. They're fun. Okay. Michelle Rodriguez. I saw her at oh, an airport. And the guy, she, she was two people ahead of me. And she turned around. And the guy that was in between us, he, he, like, he like stammered. He was like, <laughs> oh, you're... Uh, uh, aren't you like famous? He oh, said. not the, not the 
Bad, bad move. Abort yeah, mission. Was like, it was funny because she was like, no, not right now. And like walked away. And he was kind of like, no, I'm pretty sure that's her. I was like, dude, chill out, man. You're embarrassing your kids. Ah, your kids. Oh, my God. Right? Like you're a grown, you're a grown ass man with like your kids here. And they're, and they're ugh, it was gross. OK, so what about not having kids? Uh, intentionally, like we don't have kids, and it's kind of rare. Weird, Is it kind of a weird yeah, subject too? Kids. No kids for me. That's been my program forever. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same. I want to be every. All of my friends have kids, and I want to be the crazy uncle to all of their kids. You know, I'm like, I don't. It's it's not something that I need. <laughs> Um, and I don't feel like I need it. And I've always felt that way. You know, I think it was because as a like high schooler, as a teen, I babysat for a lot of different, for a lot of other kids as like a way to make money. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, fuck, I st- I'm staying in on my Friday night, like changing this kid diapers. Yeah. Like, this is bullshit. Like I'm doing it to make money, but I, do- I definitely am like, if, if you don't make enough money, then you're just at home with this fucking kid. I'm like, I, and I don't want to do that on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> so you take your fucking kids and any of my future kids and you. OK, you know, one thing that I think is really interesting about you is you guys, you and Julie are uh, you guys love having groups like you love socializing, being around people. True. I'm, Dinners. I love to cook. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Well, it's not a quirk. I mean, it's a thing that sustains me. Well, <laughs> um, I didn't think of it in that way. It's not a quirk. Oh, I like cooking. Well, I didn't say it had to be a quirk. I just didn't know that. Uh, no, I was thinking back to your original question of like, what are what are some quirks about you? Or what what was the phrase? Yeah, no. Uh, I don't remember. Why are you quirky? No, that's I don't remember. No. It doesn't matter. But the group thing is is interesting. I'm super – Ellie and I are both very homebody, solo. We like to be by ourselves. We don't really like to be around people. Like we do, but we, we'll like avoid it more than we'll seek it out. Sure. And it's just fascinating to me. It's so different. Like tell me Maybe about your a, way. It's – I'm sure that there must be some like Midwest thing to it. I'm you know, from I fucking like Fargo, North Dakota. You and Amanda. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So I think so, that's the reverse. Yeah. I think, oh, because we're all stuck inside for all winter, we're just used to being alone. <laughs> oh, are you an only child? No, I have a sister. That's cool. But then Ellie has siblings also, so. And she likes to be alone? Yeah. So I don't know. Because I don't really know Ellie. Like, I really only spend time with you. Right, because she doesn't really like hanging out. Like, she's... That's like a, a negative way to say it. Doesn't like hanging out. No, she's, no, no. It's, she's a homebody. It's, like, it's fine. It's a fine way to say it. You know, I think this goes back to the, like, hey, bro, you're talking too loud, or, hey, you're being racist. Like, it's fine to talk about your the way that you're choosing to live as, you know, just like a... This is how I'm doing it. There's not a right or a wrong. It's just this is this is what I'm doing. Yeah. But also I, you even earlier understand the uh, I guess I want to say the value of semantics. Right. Like how you say things is important. I've I value some antics. You're right. <laughs> semantics, you fucker. That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, what did he, what did he just do? Wait, we need to get Johnny on the PA. What did he just say? I'm just because I don't want to have kids doesn't mean I don't want to appreciate dad jokes. Mmm. I think that's just an age thing. We just like in Oh yeah, it could be. My dad my dad is a joker. Like he's always cracking jokes. Oh cool. Sometimes funny. He's just a, a game of volume. He's like, I don't give a fuck. It's just yeah. like. Oh, yeah. And, but 
Uh, volume and repetition, because it's always the same oh, jokes. Oh, that makes it a little harder. No, I mean, yeah, it makes it nearly impossible. Julie likes to finish his jokes now. My wife likes to finish because, his jokes. Because, yeah, did it totally. Yeah, and he's she's just like... Dude, get some new material. Exactly. If you're playing he's, the game. No, but he he's... He was a teacher, right? So he's like, every year, every quarter, he's got a new group of kids. Oh, that's And so he's always dipping into the same bag of tricks, right? Like, Very oh, interesting. he's refining his material. But now I'm like, yo, I've had 40 years of your material. Like, let's keep it. Let's <laughs> keep it up. civilized. But are they getting better? I mean... Yeah, they're and uh, yes, and more open and honest, you know. He's like, and the women can be included in this joke too. When you walk through a valley, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, he's like, yeah, he's 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 the best. He's very funny. And my mom is in a lot of his jokes, but in a way, like, he's like so in love with her. That's that's the way he includes her in the jokes. Oh, He's that's never so cool. Anything. Yeah, can, it's very funny. Can you imagine growing up with parents that are so in love with each other? That's radical, my friend. That is not a it's, common I thing. I mean, it's a lot of pressure because I mean. everything that you see in popular culture and that your friends are dealing with, you know, is divorce. <laughs> is different than that. Yeah, for sure. So that so then when you. Like, I mean, we touched on this earlier when you're dealing with your own relationships and they and they're not functioning the way that you're seeing a relationship happen. You're like, well, what the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, right? I don't agree because I, I, that's a comparison. Well, I'm just telling thing. you what I'm just telling you what I was dealing with. OK. Oh, good. I like that. Interesting. Okay, so then what about it doesn't matter what anybody else's journey is because it's completely different than your own. Therefore, it can never be equatable. Does that help no. or hinder? No, because, you know, like like we were just dealing with when you're like, oh, I'm too stoned. You're like, I can say, I've been there before too, dude. I'm with you. And you've been there before. And we both made it out the other side. So it's going to be okay. Right? <laughs> I don't know. God, I hope so. LSD? What about that? Okay, I'm super down. I actually have some right now, and I'm just waiting for, like, an opportunity. I did some during quarantine. <laughs> Ooh, what was the uh, set and setting? My home. What do you think? <laughs> Love that. Solo. Or... This was like deep in quarantine, like before people started riding bikes again. Yeah. Um, and I got, somebody was like, oh, try this candy. It's got some acid on it. And I was like, what? that sounds crazy to just like sounds give fantastic. to someone. Cool. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to just do like a little, like I'm going to do like a little and see what happens. Oh, cool. Um, oh, how was it? Yeah, it was pretty radical. Did you find but, the meaning of life? Can you share it with us? No, 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 no. I called my grandma though. Like it made me, Dirty. so I'm not someone who's typically, how do you, how do I describe this? I'm not like I'm very interested in conversation. I love meeting people. I love talking to people. Um, and I like to sort of do that outside the house because then when I come home, then I'm like, cool. I can like hunker down and read and watch movies and be quiet. And so like, if you're my partner, hopefully she can't hear what's going on up here. It's okay. We're not recording. We're just okay. We're recording this. <laughs> It's, not, it's okay. We're only recording and we're only going to put this out into the world. <laughs> but um, she'll never watch this. No, nobody watches this. Anyways, go on. That is, and I don't mean this in a bad way. That is 100% true with her. Like I would be like, you should watch this video. And she'd be like, it's two hours long. Why am I going to watch that? I, <laughs> I spend every day with you. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Like she accuses me of like, she's like, you don't react to things. Like you don't get excited about shit. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, let's go for a bike ride. And then like, yeah, I get excited about some shit. You're like, let's go right now. And it made me, so eating the, the LSD or the acid candy made me like super emotional and cool like i was like oh, i need to call my parents and just like check in with them and say what's up Whoa. and you know i and i don't i'm not someone that typically does that like i'm the one that gets texts from their parents all the time are you okay like we haven't heard from you in like three or four weeks like what, hello great um then not, i'm not somebody who's like oh it's saturday gotta call my folks yeah, um, that's great. It did exactly what you needed. Yeah, for sure. And that's I like called my grandma and like called a bunch of people and like just like was excited to sort of share in the uh, experience of living in that moment. Versus normally I'm like I just focused on the things I need to do. Right. Right. Tasking. We're all right. tasking our life away. But we kind of love it, too, though. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Because it feels good to accomplish stuff. Totally. And life is cool, you know? Like, I like it. I like riding bikes and doing things and meeting people and, you know, all the things that we've been talking about. Yeah, and seeing all of those things as... Because you could easily... All of those things could be, like, chore-like or you could... It's, I guess I, I want to ask a question of like, how can you see those everyday things, the life things as a positive? How do you see them as the, the beauty of life? Sure. I mean, I guess you just have to, like, it has to come with a realization that that even, that that side of things even exists. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just a rest and an acknowledgement Like a choice. Like I'm going to choose to to be aware of this side of things happening. So it's like almost you, like a commitment. When you get quiet, I'm like, because I can't see you. No. Like I don't see your face. And when you get quiet, I'm like, oh, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking. Like I just don't, I don't know how to respond. Yeah, I'm thinking because it's like all these different ways that can be responded. They're, they're when I see your hands. Big questions. It looks like this. Do the hands help? He can't see me. He's just looking at the ceiling. But we can see him. We need another mirror on the ceiling so I can be like, I can look at you. No, I would have to look at the mirror. That would suck. I fully thought that was a wall that I was looking at. No, we're going to do this. Now when you say it's a ceiling, I know it's a ceiling. Yeah, I get it. Oh, what's that? That's what we're doing. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Stoke broker. I'm glad that you got my burgeoning mustache in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm stoned. I don't know what do we go. Do we go back to the thing that we were just talking about or talk about what does the word burgeoning mean? Bru no, bludgeoning? I want to ask you some questions about oh my God. <laughs> what, you, uh, what you're working on and how's it going. Like what's the like, what are you stoked about that you're working on? I like that you've got a couple things that happen every week. But Thank also, you. What, what else are you working on? Oh, I've been toying with the idea of doing a trip to Montana. Cool. Beginning of August before the snow gets heavy. I need to just use the goddamn camper van, do a trip. Dream scenario is I figure out a cross country mountain bike just in time to test that fucker out in Idaho and Montana don't know if that's going to happen and have been scheming on a way to get like a brand to pay for it, which is really, I need to asterisk this by covering up Jeremy and saying it's weird because Jeremy works for a brand that is a potential option for all the things that I talk about all the time. And it's really confusing because it's well, like, but people, it's so people weird. don't often talk about that side of that, that of it. So then People that watch the things don't they they like wonder how they happen. Uh oh, here we go. 
Julie? Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Atlas, and welcome, Julie, to the Everything's Been Done podcast. Bonjour, Dustin. Hey, how many pounds does your dog weigh? Kilograms. Fuck it. In kilograms. How many kilos? Five. No. 40 kilo, I think. 40. 45. He's like, um, he's probably almost 90 pounds. 45 kilo. Whoa. Heavy duty. Like, almost, it's, 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 you, it's how much you weight, right, Dustin? Similar. I mean, I uh, it, maybe a little bit more. Just a little more. I like this. You know how to play this game. <laughs> talk to my talk to my vanity. Exactly. He's a you know a, just a pretty lightweight man. Goes... He's just like a pro racer. Exactly. Dude, Tour de France ready. All the pro yeah. racers look like they're eighteen. I was like, God damn it! They're all just like models that are eighteen. They're just like. But they're oh. very. They're very young, and all they do is ride bikes. Right, like zero personality. Just like us. Was that just, just like us? You know. Yeah. You no, guys are you guys young, and then you ride a bike. He wants a he wants to ride a hardtail mountain bike. Good well, okay, you. good question Great. for for Julie. Um, so going from gravel, all this stuff. Basically, I need a mountain bike. It's that t like the terrain is getting too intense. So. But I'm my whole life has been drop bar bike. So I'm sorry if I'm yelling. Uh, so I want to transition into this more capable bicycle. And my logic has been, OK, it's a cross country mountain bike. I side note, personally, really, really want to try it with drop bars, even though I know that's a bad idea. Wait, what? Let's let's backtrack here. And he knows, I know he it's weird. He's talking work for a brand. We're just having the conversation. Yeah, we're friends now. We're not work in business. A brand. Okay. You want put a drop bar on a mountain. Oh, it's going to stop there. Okay, it doesn't have to. It could just be No, I'm just trying bar. to understand the psychology of the place you come from. So, Bro, I come you know what I say to that? Everything's been done. Everything's no, I don't care. Because of course. I just want to try it. I want the experience. I mean, the, the thing is, like, when you think about it, it's harder, it's, it's easier to break like that and to crawl like that than doing like this. This is naturally a really, like, a position where you have a lot of strength. In what if hands. it's in the, in the middle, straight in between both of those? Like that. Just whatever and then, A and B, just split it in the bit 45 degrees or whatever, like something in the middle. And then wide. So your drops are basically your handlebars. They're just like, they're almost flat bars that slope, bend down and maybe so they come the back. Thing, so I think the oh. thing for me is. Maybe you could have this is the levers. This is the tough part for me, is it's an aesthetic situation that I don't <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way I'm just like yeah well, not for me but what what's what you that's your situation gonna look your situation is just gonna look like a cyclocross bike because cyclocross frame sprint are basically our tail mountain bike but there's a there's a, a, a shock everything isn't the ge geometry all totally different no, it's getting really close. It's different, but it's getting really close. Like it's kind of fulfilling a bit the same function. And the one difference, I guess, the one main difference at this point is like that you have like a flat bar on the mountain bike and it's like more sturdy. Mm -hmm. And then you have, right, like you, your flat bar is less likely to break and your shifting system is less likely to break on the flat bar than on a drop bar. Oh, and then the other difference sense. is like, you 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 will have a front suspension, um, and that would be like the two difference. But you, it's getting really really close, and it's which is why the, the which function. is why the divergence fun, right? Because it's like really close to hardtail mountain bike territory. Oh, interesting. And, interesting. and then, I mean, we were saying I, I remember having this conversation fifteen years ago when you would like go and, and before. This was before the cross-country World Cup become more technical. 
Mm. So at this point, sometimes we'll show up at like a World Cup in like Germany or in the Netherlands. And then it would be, we would joke that we, we might as well, we could have as well bring a cyclocross bike for that course. Interesting. Interesting. Um, Right, and also this was like this was when I was twenty. Most people were still in twenty six wheels in mountain bike, but now everybody's on twenty nine inch mountain bike, and that's that's what you would do anyway if you have a hard tail, because you're not looking to taking like super tight corner and doing super technical stuff anyway. So you like bigger wheels don't uh, like like it's it's most likely what you want. So yeah, it's I think it's really really close, but hmm. like the one difference is like. You wouldn't have as much fun jumping over stuff if you put a drop bar. That makes sense. Well, I feel like it limits your control drop bar, right? Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I'm so I, maybe the <clears throat> actual move is then to shift into just straight up mountain bike. Just, just do it as it is. Flat bar. For some reason, I keep thinking I want to try cross like a full suspension. I. I think the next gradual step would be hardtail, which I think would be a smart way to do it. I just have been focusing on it being a full suspension for just various reasons. It'll come in and out, and it's like, well, why not just go to that next level because you're already... But you don't need you know, as... For what you're doing, you don't need as big uh, of... as uh, a full, full suspension. But it depends, depends how good of a rider you are. That's also a really um, important thing to talk about. Like I sure. feel like you could get the same suspension from a hardtail with really big tires that you would from like a super cross oh, country. Really? Really? Yeah, you would get from a super cross country full suspension. Okay, bike. and it would be way lighter. Yeah, and well, just... that's like it's cheaper to be light on a hardtail than on a full suspension. Cheaper, like monetarily yeah. or like yes, Mon- yeah. monetarily. You're gonna spend. You're gonna get more, uh, less weight for less money on a hotel for less money. But you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to get a lower weight on the full suspension. But this is about skills also. It's you have to know. Everybody should know where their skills are when you ride a bike, right? How do you and know? Then, well, this is how you know. Like, if you can go like at a at a trail network system and almost ride everything with um, Artel, right? So, so such is Tony Pereira. Tony Pereira can go anywhere and ride like oh, on the Artel really? bikes. Cool. Yeah, because he's very good. So he can, he's just like. He's, he's She's saying like things that people, that, pe- that people would need a full suspension bike for. Yeah, he's saying. Totally. Totally. So you need to know that about yourself, and then you can decide where I'm gonna ride, um, and then based on that you can say, well, I'm gonna ride mostly in like I don't know, in like a a park next to my house, and it's mostly like rolly terrain. So there's no big jumps, there's no big drop. It's not super rocky. I'm really I'm like comfortable, um, relatively comfortable with that. So I'll tell. No brainer. If you say, okay, I'm gonna go to like the the a network system, like a mountain bike network system, like Sandy Ridge in Oregon or like Demo in California, and I just I wanna I wanna really push myself, but I'm not there technically yet. I w- it would be better for you to have a full suspension bike to do that because what full suspension bike is gonna allow you is gonna allow to like push yourself outside of the comfort zone while taking less risk. Of crashing. Love it. Interesting. I interesting. I feel like I'm totally in the middle on that. I could I could go either way is what either I mean. Way, yeah. So whatever. If I got the hard I tail. Mean, are you gonna want to drive to no, go mountain back? We, we like, drive all the time anyways. Ball, We're you know? already doing it. It's just it's it's basically this is all Ron's fault. The terrain keeps getting crazier and crazier. And I just get so sick of getting beaten up at the end of the, just so like, it's like, mm-hmm. this sucks. This is not fun. It's fatiguing. It hurts my brain. It feels like I'm getting hit in the head for fucking six hours. <laughs> but to me, 
the interesting thing is that you wouldn't like think like I don't want to go ride there. Like you would think there must be a better technological solution. To there's that. a there's a better tool for the terrain. Right. Yeah. That's and then why you know like the, the next level of that is like um e mountain bike. Okay. Because then with an e mountain bike, if if you don't have like you're not like super technical, if you have like a Levo SL, for example, even if you're not super technical and you're not super in shape, you're gonna be able to cruise around those network system, no problem, because it's gonna be easy to get up. You're gonna be at the top of the climb, like pretty fresh physically. So then you're gonna have a lot of still like energy and focus to go down and try new things. Um, Interesting. So that's kind what of is, what what's what is Ron what does Ron ride? He doesn't have a ton of bikes. But he does have a hard tail. What I'm asking is, is he thinking along the same lines? Um, or is he just like, whatever, I'll just beat myself up. We don't uh, know. The, yeah, it's kind of, I think it's like a complex answer. You know, like I think he <laughs> would totally ride, a, you know, a full suspension. But then there's the reality of like, well, I wouldn't actually like buy one. But I, I don't know. There's just all this I don't know. That would be a good question for Ron. Ron, what are you feeling about all this? Ron, but are you for you, for yourself, Dustin, think about like what you want to ride the most. If you want to ride more like cross country, cross, cross country style stuff, right? Stuff you would do on a gravel bike, but just like not get beat up, whatever. Yes. And then maybe if you go like for the five times a year, you're gonna actually go like to a trail system, just rent a bike. Oh, at like fat or because it's like then even it's people people say it's expensive to run a bike for a day. It's true. It's gonna cost like ninety bucks, like over hundred bucks if you want like a high hand bikes. But if you think about it, if you do that, like if you ride like five times, ten times, even right, you spend like one thousand dollars, one thousand dollars a year. It's good at math. Not true. That's one of my quirks. Not good. Yeah. And and then you spend you're gonna spend thousand dollars a year to ride. Uh, $12,000 bike. Yeah, that's cool. I'm interested in this. And then the bike you ride all the time is your Artel. You, you you ride it like three times a week. So you, you own it because you, you ride it more and, you know, you want it. Plus, I have to say, it's... She has to. I have to say, <laughs> it's like the you fit on a, art suspe- like on a full suspension bike. It's like, if you're not going to like you know, like ride for like six hours, it doesn't matter as much. But we do ride for six hours. We definitely, big is is part of the thing, for sure. But you don't ride like park for six hours. Never. It'll, we'll fuck with it and then we'll go off into the everything else. Exactly. But it's feeling... I don't think you get as, I really don't think. I know, I, I know what. But do I you want... think when you're talking <laughs> couples moment. <laughs> how did you? All right, get out of here. This okay, is bye. my episode. This is mine. You go away. No, I think, I think it's episode. just trying, trying to, uh, to say, oh, you need like an um, epic ever, like or like an epic, like a twenty pound. Who epic. doesn't want an epic ever? Exactly, I Dustin. I, I want, want the epic. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but honestly, the you should borrow or rent a couple you should rent that bike and ride it and try it because i did that recently where i've been riding my diverge to saltzman and riding up and riding some trails on on it yeah and then riding home which is essentially what you want to do but longer rides yes right. and then i did it on a, a hardtail mountain bike interesting Not, didn't bars, but i did yeah. it on a hardtail mountain bike and it felt like garbage because yes. any time that I was on the road Hating or any time that I was trying to do distance, Hating it felt like garbage. So what's the answer? Well, I think it's something like the Diverge. Like I think it's like a like a gravel bike. Yeah. I think you should just try it. Like get the bike. I'm sorry, it's try pasta. It. I'm hungry. Bye, Dustin. Pasta. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The answer is try it because... Try what? Get the bike, put drop bars on it, and try it, and then oh. 
see what you just think. See what I think. When I, I was when I was riding that hardtail mountain bike, I was like, this I don't want to ride. Have to ride. I want to ride trails on this bike because Only. it feels so good. On the house. Yes, but I don't want to have to do any sort of distance on it because yes. I'm more upright, and it just it sucks. Feels slow. Whereas the the I'm willing to be a little more beat up on a gravel bike with big tires for that for the distance pay. game. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm well also I'm a, I'm a consummate experimenter. I'm all, I love experimenting. Sure. So I'm like, "Oh, well this ride is I'm getting sick of being like so beat up on these rides. The rides are are now slowly shifting to being a little bit more aggressive than I'm wanting to put up with. And we have all the I pavement. Want to come on some of these rides. I would love this. You have to get up early. That's the hook. I know. I would do it. I've been getting up early now that I work at Specialized because we do meetings so fucking early. Because <laughs> they're with other countries and stuff, huh? Exactly. Exactly. I feel like this, the Diverge, of course, like company line, right? Um, the the Future Shock, which is the... Oh, I have never used that. Shock at the head head tube. Yep. It fucking works. And it works for what you're talking about right now. Just like bar fatigue. Yes. Oh, I would love yeah. to try it. And put a dropper post on it and some as fat of tires as you can go. Yes. I feel like you're going to like that geometry wise moving across yes. distance yes. versus the geometry of a mountain bike but with drop bars on it. Like, I feel like you want to put drop bars on it because you want to use the drops and get sort of extended out there, which really- Good question, good point. The function of it works better on a gravel bike. Hmm, I like it, yeah. And then one thing that you said too, which I would really like to try is just like a diverge with flat bars. Like, fuck yeah, let's totally. try it. Like, I want to see totally. what that's like. Totally. Like that sounds cool too, especially with those like off of the, I don't know what they're called. They're like off the end, like bar ends. No. Cause a Go bar ends. end to me is what plugs the end of a drop bar. I know, but you know, the things that are like, yeah, whatever. Goat horns. We used to call them too. Oh, cool. Really? You want like a '90s mountain bike. I know. You want like a well, good thing John Tomac is the next guest on the podcast because I've got so many questions. <laughs> I mean, he did it. Yeah, is that true? I mean, I'm not surprised by anything these days. Uh, no, that's not true, but it, it it should be. What about Ned Overin? I could. Oh, who's I, that? I was on an email with him recently. Who's he? Sorry, oh, Ned. Man. Please educate my ignorant self. Look him up. Look him up and then get him on the podcast. Okay, be, what's his last uh, name? Ned. Overend. Overend? Like bar overend? Pretty much. Oh, my God. Is that a scene? How do you name? not know who this is? Because I pay attention to skateboarding. I don't pay attention to cycling. I mean, yeah, this is like 90s mountain bikes. Well, and I would never, I'm just now learning about mountain bikes. <laughs> 2019. That's what I hear. When I hear you say you want drop bars for a, for a full suspension bike. I know. Bike. I know this is like... Ride gravel. I know. I know. But just get it and do it and then you'll know. Exactly. And compare them. Because what I think is cool about what you do is you're willing to just try it in a bunch of different ways and be like, well, fuck, that didn't work. Um, yes. Try it a different way. So, okay. The conundrum on all of that is it's like hard to get the the tools to try because they're fucking expensive tools do you not have like a mechanic friend no and i don't have like a like a hookup to be like let me borrow a mountain bike for just like a month and just let me do some weird shit for it on it and then just give it back to you like i don't even care 
It's gonna be dirtier and scratched up, I guarantee that. But you will get it back. <laughs> you just need to get on some like, uh, some bike brands media list for their, whoever their mountain bike person is. Wait, what is a media list? Well, there is media out there in the world. You know that. Got it. Yeah. I think I might be part of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Get on someone's media list and be like, yo, I'm part of the media. I'd like to review the next mountain bike that you have out. And then they'll be like, cool. What's your size? Whatever. Okay. okay we're gonna come to you. This is a good idea. How long do they loan them out for? Depends which era of media we're talking about. Oh, interesting. Go on. <laughs> I'm learning so much. I, it's changing, but I mean, there were times when brands would lend out bikes. I mean, I had a magazine called Embrocation Cycling Journal. Part of the reason why I started that was I was like, oh, that guy works for Velo News and people send him bikes when they have new bikes. I want to do that. I want people to send me bikes when I have when they have new bikes. So I'm going to start a magazine and get new bikes. bikes or talk about them in a different way so that yes. I'm on their media list. Talk about them in a different way is a there's a that's a magical phrase right there. I like that. Well, that's just me because I'm not going to talk about them in the same. I'm not. I don't have the yep. engineering prowess to review the fork. But the foresight right. of what you said is massive. The perspective on that, the self awareness of that, is like very big. Well, I just I saw it going on, right? Like, so I started by having a cyclocross team, and so when you have a when you have a cyclocross team, you want to promote it in any way that you can so that brands want to give you the things that you need to represent them. Right. Yeah. So I was like trying to think of ways to, to, to do that. And whether it's like make videos or write blogs to, so that people are like, look, so once you can show a brand that you have a following or an audience, then they're like, cool, I want to be part of your audience. So I'm going to give you the things that we have that you're asking for. And then I was like, oh, but that's working the best and easiest, maybe not necessarily for a small team of bike messengers that are racing cyclocross, but, but for media and for um, magazines and things, right? Yeah, more so for the magazines. Yeah, totally. Yes, yes, yes. So I was like, well, I'll just start making my own magazine so then they'll want to be a part of it some of that's, them did some of them didn't exactly that's the game well and then also as the media i feel like you're always kind of hustling it like totally the brand isn't just like oh some brands will be like hell yeah they're down but not all of them and then people change all the time so you got to call these always sure. yeah it, that's it's a it's I, its own game right like yes that's a game like just being on top of that and knowing like who's working where and who's who's down with my vibe of stoner philosophy that's gonna that's gonna get behind this. Interesting, interesting. I like this. I'm what? learning so much. Oh, here I gotta show what, you. What brands are you are you into? <laughs> <laughs> like, like what bikes or brands are you like? Those are the ones that I should do this with. Specialized, well, obviously, take it, take that out of the equation. No, for, I was it's, for the conversation. But it, it, I always honestly think like, oh, specialized makes sense because it's in America. They're the Nike of skateboarding, in my opinion. So I'm always like, totally. oh, I want to fucking work with them. There's, totally. and that's a very surface level response too, because then you get into like, some companies are just too corporate and they're just like hard to fucking work with because they're big monsters and that's just how it is, which is fine. You know, and then there's small companies too, which will be like, it, it's so case by case though. Cause some companies will be like really small and super down and it's like a perfect match, you know? I think I'm yep. not super focused on the brand. I just want to fucking try this thing out. Like I just want this experience. 
And I don't really care what name. I kind of care. Like, if there's some derfy stuff, I'll be like, I'm going to pass on that. But Nobody wants derfy stuff. <laughs> That's, I think I learned no, that one think, from Fergus. I think you've done a, a good job of, like, you know, elevating whatever brands you're talking about and working with. You know, I think oh, that's, that's always been massive. super cool. Wow. That's, that's a good doing. compliment. Yeah. That, I mean, that would totally be the goal too. Right. I don't know if I've ever Obviously. even thought about telling somebody that or a brand that. Oh my God, you should tell them that be like it, it sounds kind of pretentious though doesn't it like i will help elevate i know but your like you have to get over that a little bit to some degree because that's what you're doing like you've i have to believe you've gotten past that to some degree to even talk to you you know you're like if if i'm just like a marketing guy at a bike brand mm -hmm. is answering emails from people you're like okay, I'm already on board with the fact that you have a website, you make a podcast, you do these things, you, you make videos each week. Like, okay, I'm on board with what you're doing. But that um, actually is massive hurdle. One is not is for the people that don't know about you, me, it's, it's starting at the very bottom of the heap. It's still just like, I don't know, like, but when someone knows you're fucking, it's gold. You're like, cool. Right this way. But I think when they don't know, that's your opportunity to be like, I got the fucking coolest bike blog, vlog, cast. <laughs> think about what's it. <laughs> vlog, blog, blast. <laughs> Are there other bike vlogs that you look at that you're into? Uh, I, always, I, I always honestly wonder that about like people that make their own stuff. You know, when I was doing imbrication, I was, I feel like I was more like, well, Belgian Knee Warmers was like the site that I always sort of modeled it after, mixed with like cool what the Radivus became kind of thing. Oh, that's cool. Kyle, Trachosaurus yes. was always a good, like that is a good one. What ones what what ones in that realm do you look at? Okay, so this is where this is a good tie in back to the jealousy thing. This is where, okay. when I look at a lot of the other channels, uh, a knee-jerk reaction of mine is jealousy. So I'll, I'll actually think like a quick negative instead of like, wow, that's what I want. And it's, it's, that's a brutal, awkward, honest truth that I just is a thing that I, I don't like that, so I want to change so, that. So does it prevent you from just looking at other stuff? Yeah, for sure it does. Oh, okay. Because I'll like avoid it. I'll be like, uh, like, because I'll start thinking negatively. It'll kind of spin me out and I'll just avoid it. But I feel like that's how people, or that's how I come up with some of the best stuff is like, I'm like, oh, look what they did. How can I do a version of that that, is, you know, is better or is different? Very cool. That's, that is a very healthy perspective. Because everything's been done. Boom. Boom. Cut. And we're done. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, no, but that's, you know, especially when we're in a community that is so small that ours is, is then you run the, run the problem of like, oh, uh, you know, we look at all the cool shit that people do. And then, oh, hey, what's Team Dream doing over there? And then all of a sudden, like, all your shit's tie-dyed. And then... People are like, wait a second. Right. Where's that from? Yeah, like it can't be too self-referential, which I've have been aware of too, you know, for cadence also. And I've been I've pulled the mistake of that too. I've all elements and sides of that I've interacted with. But as a general rule of thumb, it's good to look beyond the world you're in because then you are automatically gonna give it a fresh perspective. Totally. But you wanna be aware of what's going on in your world. Uh, like ever so enoughly. <laughs> <laughs> like you know who's winning the Tour de France right now, right? Yeah, the blue team, and they're fucking killing it. Exactly. 
You know what's funny is I watch that every single day, the tour highlights, and I love it, and I still don't know what the fuck is going on. (laughs) I'm like, I don't understand. Who's the thing? Yeah. Who's the thing? Whatever. I get it. Did you see the picture? No. Pee outside. It's also cool because it sounds like be outside. <laughs> it's like promoting being outside. You know, peeing, being. Hey, I'm just going to go be outside. I'm just going to go be outside. Player, we've been what? doing this for two hours. Oof. Is that a good or is that a... <clears throat> Who's been the longest one for you so far? I don't know. That I don't have yeah. that. I don't know. I feel like Chaz can talk. Dude, a lot of people can talk, actually. You have been one of the first people to actually ask questions to me. Which really? Is, yeah, I love it. <laughs> when we did, when we at The Athletic, when we had our podcast, it was like the funnest thing that out of that whole experience of like having a brand. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of cool shit that comes with having your own brand. You know this. One of the most fun things for me that came out of that was the podcast that we did. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I love it. I love, like, talking and interviewing people. And I, I'm not claiming to be good at it. I mean, I like to listen to podcasts and sort of analyze how they do it and, mm, like, cool. what they talk about and stuff. Um, but, yeah, that was super fun for me. But then automatically I say, why wouldn't you have pressed into that? Because you totally could have transitioned from athletic into just doing a podcast. I don't know. It never occurred to me. We sort of ran out of money to to like the way we were doing it was we hired our friend Eddie to produce it for us. Like I, I didn't want or have a desire to be like editing it. And yeah, nobody, you does. know, right. So I hired someone to do that and he, and he was awesome at doing it. So it was totally worth it. And, but I just like, I couldn't afford to keep it, keep doing it. And then why not just try and do it yourself? Cause that can mitigate the, like the, the financial uh, hurdle. Agreed. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Get, getting other jobs, having other jobs, like trying to just you know, save slash sacrifice a business and, um, you know, have a relationship, do, do thing, everyday things. And it, that was one of the things that just didn't keep going. Yeah. And it, I guess the, um, the draw or the, the passion or the magnetism of it wasn't strong enough to, cause if it was, if it was a hard connection, it would have, it would have stuck with you through the journey of the life and the money and the, sure. cause that doesn't change. It would, it would take. Yes. And then it would integrate. Uh-huh. And, what's sure. it, and then it's just, then it's one of the things you complain about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you know you're doing it right. Yeah. Although, you know, all that being said, you know, who knows what will happen. And maybe maybe we'll do it again. Maybe you just ignited that fire. Ooh, to, I would love that. To like, you know what? You know what? You know what? I should do some more podcasts. You know, it's and then all of a sudden it's happening again. Because the wow. thing is, it doesn't. You could do it so DIY too. You could just do it like with your phone. Like that's a fun thought experiment. Is what's the the simplest version I could do? What I'm thinking is podcasting with, but it could be anything with, which is a totally. really interesting exercise. Always. The simplest version of like, how can I take this thing with me and insert it into everything else that I'm always already doing? So yes, that, yes, yes. So that it works. Becomes part of my, my lifestyle, my being. That's the, I love this. That's the doer in you right there. I mean. Cracking that case. Yeah. I like, I like doing stuff. Okay, you want a rando question? And then yes. maybe we'll end it on one of these. Okay. Okay, I gotta find a good one. Where do you get them from? I just Google them. 
you Google like random question. Kind of, yeah. There's different search things. I'm learning how to search them. Uh, okay, this is... Oh, okay, this is a better one. What's something that you are obsessed with? I feel like that's a weird word because I feel like I say that about a lot of things, right? You're like a teenager. I'm obsessed with his movies. <laughs> no. I'm obsessed with this bike. I am obsessed with, oh my God, I am obsessed with making fried chicken and that's making a, it so well. But that enthusiasm um, is good. That's a good thing. But I, that's me. Like that, I say that about a lot of shit. So rattle them all off. I'm obsessed <laughs> with the <laughs> S-Works shoes. So like, we have a new bike that this is like my first project that I'm launching on Tuesday, September 22nd. Holy crap. That was evergreen readers, evergreen listeners that are out there. That was fast though. You hopped in and had to get a, oh, do we get a, Jeremy's going to step away for a hot moment. Will I talk about. Well, I was shutting the door. Cause oh. there was, it was getting loud out there. It's getting hot in here. Um, um New, new I'm obsessed with it. This new bike that we're launching. Cool. Okay, let's play the the NDA game. Is it uh, is it a diverge? No. Ooh. Is it a road bike? Yes. Because then a road bike. Like, would you consider a Roubaix a road bike? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but more or less. Yeah. It's yeah, almost yeah. more a road bike than a gravel bike. Right? Yes. Actually, how come isn't there isn't more of that type of technology on the No, that's happening. Never mind. Okay. On the divert? Or just in gravel. But it's happening. It's it's common, actually. I mean that's the divert. Yeah, to totally. Oh, does it use like zerts and stuff too? No. Oh. oh. Wait, which bike are we talking about now? <laughs> Okay, we'll go back to the one that you're working on, your first project. So that's happened pr pretty quick, though. You hopped into this role, and they're like, we're launching this in two weeks. Go. Well, no. <laughs> I hopped in, and we launched the Tarmac SL7 in, in a couple oh. weeks after I started. Whoa. So I got weeks. to see. Yeah, it was like about a month after I started, July. Jesus. July. Yeah. Um, so I got to see kind of how a launch went, like how the sort of gathering of assets and things and, you know, the media outreach that happens and sort of like put together a mind map of of that, of that process. And then um, just immediately start on this new bike. Yeah. You and know, that's things, the cycle, right? Always. Well, I don't think so, actually. I think oh. just because of the way the COVID like shut a bunch of things down, like things got backed up. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Very, very true. Right. So, so, but then they were like, okay, well, yeah, seems like you, I mean, you got to see one launch. So now let's launch this one. Cool. Wait, selfish question. What does it mean when you guys gather media assets? Is that what you said? Gather, do you reach out? How does that, what do you mean? What does that mean? Which part? You asked two things. Damn it. So when we gather media, we, we gather assets. Oh like, yeah, that's like This photos. is how we're gonna shoot the bike. Yes. You know, we have all these still photos of the bike. Yes. We also do experience photos of the bike, which might be just like Jargon. out in the world. Lifestyle, it. yep. Life, lifestyle-ish stuff. We might make a video around it. We, Those are we're assets. All of the ads, like the print ads that go with it. Um, you know, in my case, there's a whole bunch of markets out there. There's the German market, the the UK market, the French market, the wow. South America, the Asia Pacific side of things, Australia they are all going to sort of like take what we give them and either just run it. Like here's a, here's the print ads, here's the video, here you go. We run it or we translate it to, to our market. Yeah. Interesting. 
So all that stuff has to be built ahead of time enough to make sure it all happens. Um, and same with even just the copy on the product page of the website, right? It needs to be translated for all the markets that don't primarily speak English. So, yeah. And Wait. then when you're talking about media, yes, like we interface with all of the typical endemic media, cycling news, cycling tips. Um, is that Mr. Watson at the Radivest? You know all of these things. Is that because you guys want to to all hit at the same time? Yeah, I mean, and just like make them all aware. Like we've got a new bike coming out. You guys talk about bikes to people who are interested in learning about new bikes. Tell them about this new bike. Cool. Right. Right. Because then that's what. The, yeah. 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 And it's been super interesting to me. I mean, I did a lot of that for Rafa. Right. And, and that was my job was like, okay, we've got this, we know this Jersey's coming out. We know this collection's coming out. We're partnering with this team and we need to just talk about that as it's happening to keep the interest in our brand alive through all of this, the, the zeitgeist and thinking about the people that are thinking about buying new cycling clothing. And then with my own company, it was just like, Hey, we made some new stuff. Check it out. Um, <laughs> right. Because it operates on a different scale. But now it's back to the other side of it. So it's been fun to like figure all of that out and relearn it. Get that muscle going again. It's kind of um, like brands always want people talking about their brand. Especially yeah. when something's new. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, interesting. So you're like, how do I get people to talk about my shit. Like how would, totally. how would Rafa do it? Would they just send like an email and be like, here's this thing. Talk about that thing that came out. Well, okay. So I'll tell you how I did it and you'll understand it when I say it, I put together a weekly newsletter where I would talk about the things that we were doing. And maybe Sorry. it wasn't always, maybe it wasn't always weekly, but it was like, couple times a week, once a month, had the new launches that we were doing or the, you know, gentleman's race video that we made or a new product or a new partnership or a cycle cross race that we were sponsoring. Um, and then that's what became sort of the Fun Times Friday email. Yeah, cool. With my own company. That's what I, when I'm laughing, saying like, you'll understand what it became. Can you explain what Fun Time Friday was? Fun Times Friday was my our email newsletter at the Athletic. That was uh, once a week Fridays. We would I would sort of talk about and review the week through ten things that I had seen on the internet. It was fun, cool. It was like a way to keep up with culture through this specific portal. Yeah. It was fun. It seems like a you hustle, may see, though. may see it coming back. Who knows? Oh, that would be sick. With the podcast. That's how you promote the fucking podcast. Yeah, maybe with the podcast. Who knows? Jeremy Dunn podcast with Jeremy Dunn. JD. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should end this. There's a good lull to work off of, and we are... This might be the longest one. And that's like you're the goal. You're just like seeing it as like, a, like an endurance event. You're just like, who do I got to beat? <laughs> what is it called when you're like um, the political term, when you just keep talking to keep to keep talking? There's a word? Yeah. What's it called? <laughs> Filibuster. When you're just like, oh, you're really? going to prevent, you're going to prevent people from voting on something by just talking about shit. Like you get the, the podium and then you just ramble until like, oh, court's closed. We got to shut the doors. Everybody go home. And like, oh, shit, we didn't get to vote on that thing. That is brilliant. <laughs> Here's the random question that I got for you. Okay. When I Google it. What's the scariest dream you've ever had? I, don't I know mine. Oh, do you? Then you should go because I have to like think about mine. It's anything with sharks. 
I dream about sharks oh. all the time, and it you, is horrifying to me. Often. Yeah. Cons- huh. That sounds... There's, there's something there. <laughs> sharks. What? When was the last one? How long ago? I feel like like last week. Oh, my God. I just wake up, and I'm like, oh, my God, I thought I was going to get fucking eaten by a shark. What in the fuck? <laughs> That sounds horrible, though, because then you're not resting. You're, like, terrified all night. I don't sleep a lot. Oh, cool. Lucky you. No, I mean, I'm, I get tired. Oh. You just... You keep the fight. You don't need as much sleep, then. Because if you needed it... I don't know. You would, like, have to. Because your shit would, like, run down. I guess. I don't know. It frustrates the hell out of Julie. She's like, when do you sleep? No way. How many hours of sleep do you think you get a night? I mean, it's not... Five? It's not something... It's not, I'm not like, oh, I only sleep two hours a night. I probably sleep six or seven hours a night. Well, that's pretty good. I would say, yeah, anything below seven is, like, efficient. Because <laughs> you can just, like... Yeah. There's just too much... There's just too much cool shit to see. And do and read and like look at and you know like I get distracted or I'm like I want to check out that new show and then I'm like fuck it's one in the morning and I just watch like four episodes oh but I loved it what about video games you fuck with video games at all no I don't because I know that I would be I would I would not be able to pull myself away from it that's the honest truth I've I've had them in the past and I would just play until like five in the morning and then oh, that's what that's you're just... obsessed with. There you go. But I'm not obsessed with that anymore. I don't find myself longing to do it. You know, it's funny is I find myself losing attention. My attention wanes like it doesn't hold my attention. Really? So I do not get obsessed. It's just like eh, I get bored because huh. it's like too hard or it's like I get sick of doing the same thing over and over because it, I don't know yeah I kind of want a little more obsession with it I think I feel like and I also feel like modern video games would pull me in further would, yes yeah that sounds awesome like, the ultimate it's like escape. you're part of the movie yes. like all the graphics are super fucking cool yes you can my do buddy, like my friends have been telling me about this video game where they're like, you, you need to play this video game. You're going to love this video game. And I'm like, that's why if you're saying that about it, I should avoid that video game because I got other shit I need to get done. Yeah, but and it's not going to happen. Nah, it's it's a different thing. It's like watching TV. It's interactive television. It's it's television is passive. Movies are passive. This is actually an interactive talk about eye hand coordination way to interact with a movie and it's not like you only watch movies all the time and never get anything done it's you you know you have a time and a place for them what is do you do you play video games i do and i actually i like wish that i played them a little bit more than i do (laughs) what video games do you play so the last one that i've been kind of messing with is uh it's called skater xl which is like a skateboard video game um, and then, but previous to that was Red Dead Redemption, which I've still been dabbling with. Oh, okay. With. I love, I love Westerns. Yep. And it's a movie game that you play and it's, there's, yeah, it's cool. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, obviously a very simple, super entertaining. Uh, yeah. damn, there's this other one by one of the creators of Rick and Morty and it's, awesome it's like so like dirty and funny and stupid and it's hilarious and they swear and they say all kinds of fucked up weird stuff and i think because we grew up with video games i remember the like mario and safe like fucking sonic the boring you know now they're like (laughs) fucking shit fuck come bitch motherfucker you're like this is great (laughs) what's the name of the rick and morty one a trover saves the universe Trover? Yes. Saves the universe. And all all in all, it's like not the greatest game in the world, but it's so like 
funny and weird that I like. It's entertaining in that sense. All right. The Last of Us is the one that my friend is trying to get me to play. Okay. I'm always looking for something new. The Last of Us. Sounds awesome. Is it horror, though? Horror? Is that what you said? Or hard? Horror. Like, did you ever play Resident Evil? Yeah, but I don't like that shit. It scares me. Too scary. Yes. Yeah, I don't like being like, ugh. Like, I don't like going like, ugh, every time. Dude, that shit sucks, man. Stressful as fuck. It it seems like post-apocalyptic, but not like zombies, like actual survival. <sighs> like the road. Yeah, that, yes, probably. Oh, dude, that sounds... Are you talking about the book or the movie? <laughs> both. They're both awesome. I love Cormac McCarthy, yes. They're okay. Both awesome. I've been trying to read all the pretty horses for like, I'm on page 90 and I don't know any single thing that's happening in that book. They're in yeah, the, they're in try, the West. Try something else then. It's weird though, because I fucking world, love that book. God damn it. I can't like, I feel like it's too smart for me. Like I just, then, then just do something else. Yeah, He's got guess, other books. I guess you're right. Okay. No need to waste. Maybe you'll come back to it later. That's kind of what oh. I did with it. Like, I was like, I tried to read it kind of when the movie came out, right? And I became aware that it's, there was <gasps> two things. There's a movie? <laughs> uh, yes, there's a movie. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of a different book then. No, what's the, it is the Western one. I think that is it. Yeah. Okay. okay but you but were I saying you tried to read it? You tried to read it when the movie came out? And I was just not into it, right? Like, I was just like, eh, not for me. And then I read it a couple of years ago, and I was like, this is the best thing I've ever read. So maybe it's just the time. Fascinating. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, especially with the books, like, they strike you at a time. And if you pick it up and you can't get into it, just move on to something else, because there's so many books out there. Maybe you'll come back to it, and maybe not. Yeah, that's, ooh, this is cool. It's like, it's almost like the book has a wavelength or a signal that it's transmitting. And at times, because we're changing every single moment of every single day, we'll be able to tune into that frequency at some point down the road. And maybe that point's always in your life. Maybe it's here and there. Maybe it never happens. And that goes for books, for sure. music, movies. For sure. Tight. Very interesting. You know, like, I used to not have patience for, like, nonfiction. Like, some people are just like, I don't read fiction. That's whack. I only read biographies and memoirs and things. Or instructional and like, shit. And I'm like, I'm the opposite of that. Instruction manuals. <laughs> and then, you know, I picked up a memoir of, it's like that Swedish guy. Finnish guy, maybe he's Finnish. Carl Ove something. Mm -hmm. This is the cool part about having your computer there. Oh, screen share it. Carl Ove Nausgard. Nausgard is a Norwegian author. That's sick. And he wrote these like tomes called My Struggle. Oh, wow. You know, see, like, there's like five of them and they're all his memoir what is a uh, memoir it's just like you're the telling the tale of your life interesting right like allegedly like allegedly like your non-fiction account of your life but probably with some tales spun into it you got to keep like, the viewers very like, interesting Right. Like I would be like, I, when I, in my motorcycle years, when I had my motorcycle and then play that up when really I had a motorcycle, but it was like a 440 CC, like little put put around town. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just where and when it strikes you. You know, what's funny is I had a motorcycle for a hot second when I was a bike messenger in Sacramento 
and polar opposite of use. Mine was a 1000 fucking Suzuki blah, blah, blah. But the idea was to it travel is. on it. Yeah, it was too much fucking bike. I hated it and I got rid of it and I never rode it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds to me, that sounds Stupid. too much. That sounds like a, a move a 20 year old makes. And you're like, exactly. oh, I'm learning life. Exactly. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What are you going to ride this weekend? Well, I don't know if we... Uh, Zwift? Can we go outside? Is Zwift even feel okay? Because it's... My lungs hurt doing nothing. I do it. I can't... I can't not. It's like... It's, it sounds weird, but I got to do something. That's fine. I've been riding a lot, so I'm like, all right, I'm taking a week, week or two off. And oh, that's perfect. You're like, whatever. Recovery. Smoke. <laughs> Drink a bunch of beer, smoke a bunch of weed, watch some basketball. <laughs> Are you riding this weekend? If it's clear, I mean, I would, okay, yeah. people keep saying like, oh, it's going to be totally clear by Saturday. I don't but know. Like, a few million acres of forest have burned down and the smoke is coming towards us. I don't know that it's going to be cleared by Saturday. Thank you. I'm just um, saying. Yeah. I might need to go drive somewhere. I, our friend, I might need to pee outside. <laughs> our friend, um, our friend Abby drove to like Montana and it was like smoky all the way to through Wyoming. So, whoa, that's crazy, right? That's heavy. Huh? Talk about ending on a high note. Well, I was thinking, hey, I'm, I'm still thinking about going to Montana. So that yeah. sounds exciting, actually. You should. I think it's just a planning game now. But yeah, that's the plan. All right. Well, let's. Uh, thanks. I don't know. I guess we'll close it up. There it is. Oh, man. It was so fun to talk to you. The, the, what a great way to spend a Thursday afternoon slash evening when you're stuck inside smoke zone. I'm on Smoko. Yeah, very well put. And then, well, smoking inside the smoke zone. <laughs> smoking in. <laughs> I love that's one of my favorite Australian phrases is Smoko. I'm on Smoko, which is like I'm on smoke break. Oh, weird. You're like, mate, I'm on Smoko. <laughs> They're like, oh, leave me alone. Cool. Look up this video. I'm on Smoko. Smoko. Is there even it's a, a music? It's a music video by the band. I'm on Smoko by the band. The Chats. All right, done. Australian Australian punk band. That can be our intro into. Into the into the podcast video. I'm on Smoko, so leave me alone. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, maybe if it's under yeah. Listen maybe. to it. Interesting. Okay. It's really funny. And then it'll if for the for the four people that listen to this whole epic odyssey, they'll be no like, one's gonna listen. no one's gonna listen to this whole thing. It goes to the end. They're like they tied the room together. I'm on smoke, uh, so leave me alone. Do people listen? Can you see on your analytics that people listen to the whole thing? I do not know how to tell that. I've been curious. <laughs> I've been curious of that one. It'll do averages, which are annoying. So they're like, most people stopped around a quarter of the way in. <laughs> most people stopped so, at two minutes. So do you think like, oh, at two minutes, I should really amp it up every time. Like you should have a timer that's like at two minutes. Okay, guys, here's when we get crazy. And then the people that you lose at two minutes are like, oh. I they hang around at three happened. minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the hook, though, the real thing is to get that shit going right at the start. Because if it's I've, that's one thing I have learned from doing these. It can't start off with like a how you doing and it can't be questions that are too personal between sure. the people because right. no one can give a fuck about like stuff, you know? Yeah, because they don't know. They're like, they're like, OK, you guys got a bunch of inside jokes. Great. Right. And like, I don't care. This is weird to say right now, but I don't care what the weather is in Portland. Generally, people don't give a fuck. Right. How's the weather where you are? Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, like who cares? Because by the time you listen to it, it's like. 
something else. Well, the weather's only happening. interesting right now, right? Like it's not really unless it's right. tr- super traumatic. It's not interesting later. Oh, Seventy and thirty. Oh, great. Which happens to us every couple of weeks now. So yeah, super traumatic. <laughs> they call it super traumatic. Okay. Come on, Smokehouse. Woo. What an episode, I must say. Uh, I thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've made it this far. If you have, congratulations. I'm proud of you and amazed. And let me know if you actually made it this far because I don't think anybody will. So if you have... I hope you like the new setup Uh, for all you audio listeners. I have a new visual setup for this uh, episode and hopefully all the future ones where I draw a picture and listen to the guest. And I think I'm finding a rhythm. And remember that this week's episode is brought to you by the latest director's cut, Gravel Bike Packing, a journey into the unknown. Two people find their way across a vast and distant land. What will they ride? What will they eat? What type of scenario do they find their water in? Find out questions to this and bonus music that's not on the original episode at dustincline.com slash shop. And then in there, you'll just have to look because I don't remember exactly how you find it. Gravel (laughs) bikepacking. Thanks to Jeremy for being on the podcast. If you want to follow more of Jeremy, he's on Instagram at Jeremy Dunn. Julie, thanks for hanging out, too. True players right there. What a cool episode. Let, hey, hey Jeremy, you want to be on the episode again? Maybe I should just ask you in real life. Should we have him on? I want to have him. Okay, let's have him on.